What's up? Cheers. What we got? What y'all got for me today? So, uh, the tournament, March Madness, has begun. Uh, started, like, just under an hour ago. The good news is, Oregon doesn't play until 4 o'clock our time. So, you can see Davis showing the support of the Ducks. So, yeah. Hopefully, uh, go Ducks. That's really what matters. Seriously. So what do y'all got for me? Lincoln is laying down here at my feet. Hey, buddy. Trying to maneuver around him there. There we go. All right. Yes, Cozy Lincoln is right. Best Lincoln. Cozy Lincoln. Best Lincoln. Agreed. Uh, yeah, uh, Gary says, got a new Concordia expansion and Aegis theme stuff in the mail today. Nice. I, what is today? What day of the week? Today's Thursday, right? Right, because it started in March Madness. Uh, tomorrow, I have a huge box, or at least it should be a huge box coming from Rio Grande. So I'm looking forward to that. Has the, uh, Concordia stuff in it as well. So, yeah. All right. Toi, um, just need to get a copy to play it. Like, I, I'm sure somebody in our group has it, right? I mean, I sh So, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's see here. Uh, yeah. So, Strybarn asking about Toi. Um. So, I'm really... Hey, Lincoln. Give a moment. Lincoln. I, can you hop up for just a second? I gotta move your bed. Or don't freak out. How about you just stay there and I'll just drag you. Nope, stay there. Nope. Oh, no. Yeah, I thought that might happen. He left. But I had to, I had to fix the chair. It was driving me nuts. Lincoln, come here, bud. Come here. Lincoln. A moment. Nope. He said to hell with that, I'm going to bed. So that's what he did. Alright, fine. Alright. So yeah, toi. Uh, if if I can get somebody to get a copy or bring their copy, I will I will try it for the umpteenth time to try and like it. Still positioning things in the studio where I want it, so it's, it's a work in progress. Eric says, just want my Boilermakers not to embarrass themselves this year. Um, it's Purdue, so they're going to. Sorry, Eric. Is there going to be a contest to name the cameras, or do you already have names for them? I guess sort of. Like, main and OG. Or 4K and OG, but like... If y'all want to name them, knock yourselves out. Oh, I appreciate it. Miguel likes the style. I appreciate that. It's warm. It's thick. It's it's ex incredibly windy outside. And the wind is bitingly cold. So apparently that cold snap that was up there visiting uh, Alyssa has come down to visit us. And she could have kept that as far as I'm concerned. So, oof. That's rough. Yeah, it's nasty out there. Good day to not be outside. Uh, Robin, two questions. Okay, two for one. Any plans to do a 360 of the studio at some point, especially with the new equipment? Nope. Um, that was question one. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. You, you said two questions, you only gave me one. What's up with that? Uh, let's see. 
We know you love cooking, Brianna says. Do you have any favorite cooking shows or competitions? I mean, Taco Chronicles on Netflix. But don't watch it, because all you're going to want to do is eat tacos after that, just so you know. So there's that. Um, let's see. I've always been, I, I've always liked Chopped. Even if, it, the funny thing is, is like, I don't see that as a reflection on the chefs because how do you come up with, like the ones that excel at that are amazing to me but the ones that fail majestically i don't fault them because how do you make a good meal out of cow tongue jolly ranchers and i don't know arugula like it, it, it and you have 20 minutes like come on man like i yeah i'm i'm impressed at that let's see uh great british baking show have watched every episode jess and i together have have watched them all love it never um definitely miss i don't know her name the, but the shorter lady that was um kind of the the host like not the not the judges, but she she's been gone. She's two people ago now, and I can't remember her name. But I miss her. Jess agrees with that. Uh, let's see other cooking shows. Iron Chef, like old school OG. Iron Chef was great. Um, Iron Chef America wasn't bad. It, pretty impressive. Awfully impressive. Not pretty impressive. Like I just wanted to be a judge on that to be able to eat the food. Like I hate. Uni, but if if more you know if uh if any of the chefs used it i would eat it and like it i'm sure but yeah so there we go but yeah um any other cooking shows i mean good eats like i've always been an alton brown fan back in the day Oh, you know what? Rick Bayless's uh, Oaxacan shows are great as well. Rick Bayless kind of inspired me in a lot of ways for Mexican food. So, yeah, there you go. All right. Oh, second. Uh, Robin, uh, question number two came later. Okay. Any plans for a rundown on your game shelves? What do you mean a rundown? Like... You got to understand, I have games here in the studio for imminent stuff or recurring things like uh, Oath, Age of Steam, but also Derekar and Salt and Sea are over there because that's later on this week. Uh, Weimar, Twilight Struggle, Imperial Struggle, Hannibal Ham and Hamilcar, Weimar, Meltwater, Dungeon Pets, Blocking Key, Founding Fathers, City Tricks. Struggle of Empires, Age of Industry, and Cuba Libre are all over there. Then I have the library, which is really, it doubles as a closet. It's a disaster. That's where we move the old table temporarily. And now the rugby guy team that, that, uh, that Kyle brought yesterday. Big shout out to them. Thank you, Kyle and the rugby team for moving the table downstairs. It's like 300 pounds. Um, and it's a tricky maneuvering down the stairs. Anyway, they help with that. So, so it's a disaster, but that's full of games. And then the entire downstairs is now full of games as well. So I don't know, like, what do you want by way of a rundown? Like, like a tour? Hey, Schwam Clutch, fifth month subscriber over on Twitch. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was loud, wasn't it? Let's turn that down. Appreciate that. Thank you. So there you go. Not sure what you want. Like, like, do you want me to like somehow get a camera and take a tour? Like, can't do that live. Cause cords and everything is hardwired in here. What's my favorite dinosaur? I mean, other than the J-Rex. Um... I feel like the T-Rex gets an, uh, uh, enough love on their own. I've always been kin to the Triceratops. Stegosaurus. 
Ja! Ja! Ja, yeah, ja, yeah, Brianna says, our Cooper is the same way. You disturb comfort in any way. And he leaves. Yep, that's, that's Lincoln. Uh, Shrey uh, says, thought on the Otani news and how are you feeling for the new season? If you'd asked me this 24 hours ago, I would have been really excited about this season as a Reds fan. I'll get to that. Otani, yeah, what's up with that? Fire, they, the Dodgers fired his interpreter because... He says that he got Otani to pay four and a half million dollars or something for his gambling debts, but then Otani said, "No, I had nothing to do." That <laughs> again, where where there's smoke, there's fire. But yeah, that seems like a really bizarre story. Here's the thing: it's none of our damn business. It has nothing to do with us. It has to do with Otani. It has to do with his interpreter, the Dodgers, and the legal system. None of my business. I saw that uh, Matsuzaka, I think is his name. Is that, um, let me see, was it? Yeah, I'm sorry, no. Uh, Yamamoto got rocked in his first debut. On the one hand, I feel bad for him. On the other, the Dodgers spent over a billion dollars. There's a little bit of schadenfreude there. To answer your question, how do I feel about the season? Well, let's see. TJ Friedel broke his wrist diving for a bowl in spring training. So I'm a member of Red Zone, which Red Zone is like the Reds forum, online message board, whatever. I've been there for 20 plus years now. There are people on there that are like, oh, he's an idiot for having, you don't dive. You got to protect your body in spring training. On the surface, I get what you're saying. But look, I obviously never was a professional athlete. I'm just an amateur athlete and not even really won much anymore. But when I play baseball and basketball, it doesn't matter. You're diving for balls. You're, you, you, there's no off switch for this stuff. You either play hard or you don't play. It's kind of in your DNA. And so like TJ Friedel, when he retires, if he's playing in a MSBL or MABL baseball league, 55 years old, you know he's still going to be doing? Diving for balls. Why? Because that's how you play the damn game. So he broke his wrist, diving for a ball. It happens. It's a freak injury. I don't blame him. And then, Matt McClain. Arguably two of the most important cogs in our offense has a shoulder injury that might need surgery. That happened a couple days ago. And it was reported yesterday. He's getting, whenever you have to get a second opinion on an injury, never, ever, ever a good thing. So, yeah, that's kind of dampened. Oh, and, and, um, uh, Noel, Noel V. Marte got popped for PEDs for 80 games. He was going to be like half the time at third base. So, there's three starters or important bench pieces that are out for. A month at least, maybe half the season. That's not good. So that's that's frustrating. And then uh, Brandon Williamson has a shoulder issue. One of our, uh, he was probably going to be our number six starter. So, oh my God, enough with the injuries. So that's frustrating. But you know what? Spring hope hope springs eternal. Spring hopes hope springs eternal. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm excited about the baseball season, but I just want to see our best lineup because I really think the Reds are good enough to win the Central this year, make the playoffs. But that that was the demoralizing. And but on a positive note, my Canucks are kicking butt, and my Ducks out of nowhere have five guys out for the year on a 12-man team. That's significant. And yet they made the dance by winning the final ever Pac-12 championship tournament so that felt good anyway that was a whole lot of uh i just wanted to get all my sports ball stuff out of the way so thanks shrey appreciate that uh gary sweat says anything you're looking forward to seeing or playing at heavy con are you excited for the new location um i mean I, i'm looking forward to seeing y'all honestly the, the the folks that are coming um but as far as anything in particular playing there uh 
I mean, in theory, struggle of empires. Maybe like an eight or how many does 1862 go up to eight or nine? I forget, but maybe getting a game of that in. That'd be cool with Alyssa and, and crew. So that, but it's more or less seeing the people. Uh, how am I feeling for the, uh, about the new location? I'm excited about it. Uh, the biggest complaint about the old location for HeavyCon is the, la the dearth of close food options. There are 21 within walking distance of the new hotel. And the hotel is just awesome to work with and deal with. So that has been wonderful. So I think y'all will enjoy it. I'm excited about it. I'm really, although you got to understand that's three conventions away because uh, what is today's date? Let me look. Today is the 21st. So a week from, I'm sorry, two weeks from yesterday. Uh, James and I are heading down to D.C. For, for Fort Circle. Let me get the right name. I have never once called this thing the right name because, honestly, I don't know the name of it. It is Circle D.C. 2024. That is a convention put on by Fort Circle Games. Uh, I'm going down as a guest, and I guess James is going down as a guest of a guest. Anyway, uh and that's a who's who of war game designers are going to be there. I mean, to the I, I think Mark Herman's going to be there again, but uh, Volko Runke's there. Um, oh, God. I know Cole Worley's going to be there. Hey, uh, Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire is going to be there. Um, obviously, Kevin Bertram, Tori Brown. Uh, there's, there's a lot. Uh, the... Developer for Cross Bronx Expressway is going to be there. DJ Thompson. There are others. Um, but anyway, all they, all of them are going to be there. So I'm going there as a special guest, but A, to play games. And let me talk about that for a minute. Nobody asked, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. Let me bring up the schedule, like things that I've signed up for. Um... Let me find that. There it is. There we go. All right. So my schedule, not that anybody cares probably, but um, Night Witches on, for, so it's a three-day convention, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. James and I are going down Wednesday afternoon, getting in late Wednesday night. We have an Airbnb booked. And then Thursday, going to a Nats game, sitting like fourth row behind home plate. There's a full buffet. This is amazing. This is, this, I cannot wait. This is, this was a nice gift that uh, uh, a number of us um, on, on Fort Circle's dime. So full disclosure, there you go. So that's cool. Hey, guess what? Fort Circle's never paid me for anything, though. Done a, all, all the playthroughs I've done have been a, of my own volition. But anyway, I digress. So going to the NAS game on Thursday. On Friday, when the convention starts, Night Witches, uh, I have that schedule with Liz Davidson and uh, DJ Thompson, I believe, right? Then I am hosting a game of Weimar. I thought, you know what? Maybe people want to play games with me, and that's a thing for... Some of y'all, I mean, I don't see myself as celebrity or anything, you know, whatever, but I know some folks are. So we have a four-player Weimar uh, Friday night. That's all I have scheduled, then open gaming for the rest of it. On Saturday at 11 a.m., Jason Matthews and a former senator, he was the, he was the, like, chief of staff or an aide to a senator at the Capitol. I didn't realize that. Anyway, taking a tour of the Capitol for a couple hours. And then on Saturday, James and I are in a uh, uh, playtest or prototype something called Coast Watchers from Volko Runke. That sounded really cool to me. Um, that sounds really cool to me, honestly. And then the last thing I have scheduled is Sunday at 10 a.m., Cross Bronx Expressway. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about that. So really, really looking forward to getting a game of that in. 
So, outside of that, I'm gonna be maybe recording some, I'm gonna bring the equipment down, but I don't know if I'm going to record there. What I am going to do if I don't record is set up things. So, like doing an interview with Volko, Mark Herman, um, and others, uh, probably Tori Brown, and so coordinating all that, and then hopefully uh, locking down some streams and stuff for for things. Uh, Mark Herman reached out the other day and asked if we wanted to do a playthrough of Rebel Fury, and he'll zoom in and and he'll be able to critique and 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 mess with us. So that that'll be good, and hopefully this summer. Mark Herman will be here in studio to maybe he and I can, he can teach y'all how to play Empire of the Sun and I can play with him. Something like that. So that would be, uh, that would be awesome. And we're not driving to uh, DC. It, it would be an eight hour drive. I was down for it, but James kind of wants to get some work in. So we're taking the train, which I mean, taking the train to PAX Unplugged for, uh, to Philly from Boston was pretty ideal. So just adding another, what, like hour and a half, two hours down to DC kind of makes sense. So that is two weeks from yesterday, I said, right? Yeah, we leave for that, gone for that weekend. I am back here for three days. And then I leave for 11 days for the Gathering of Friends, which is in Niagara Falls. So uh, the show will pretty much be shut down. People have offered to stream while I'm gone. I have politely thanked them and then turned them down because the idea of somebody else trying to run the streams as complicated as they are now, no, not happening. So, no. But we'll be uploading some content for y'all. There'll be podcasts, all that stuff. So you will not be uh, bereft of heavy cardboard content during that. And I'll also be recording some stuff there as well as setting up other things uh, while at the gathering. And that is from the 11th to the 21st. Uh, that is an eight hour drive to Buffalo, eight and a half. So it's about nine hours or so from here to Niagara Falls. So that we are driving. Uh, so driving up on the 11th of May, I'm sorry, of April, driving back to 21st. And then HeavyCon is the 23rd through the 27th. So, yeah. Strybarn, best PC game music? I know I'm late to it, but I was really struck by the music of Frostpunk. That intro is legit. I got nothing. Yeah, legit. I got nothing. Like, I, maybe I should. Yeah, it, it, it's so not me. Um, I, I got nothing for you on there. Best PC game music. Like, I'm trying to think, like, what are the games that I've really been into? And... I get yeah. Sorry, Strybarn. Um, apparently, apparently the intro on Frostpunk's pretty good, but yeah, no. I play video games. Never really pay attention to the music. Maybe I should, but I don't. I guess. Carla says you may have covered this at some point. That's all right. How hard was it for you to get your game group together after you moved east? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't remember. I don't feel like it was very hard, but now that's not to say that the average Joe has an easy go of it. I have an inherent advantage because I have a show. Obviously, I knew Martin Fowler. I didn't know him, to be clear. He was a patron, so I knew of him that way. And when I told him I moved to Wakefield, and he's like, wow, I'm like seven minutes away. Okay, cool. And then I got invited via Jess to other game groups, found people, and then mostly it's mostly patrons that are living in the area. Um, but hey, 
If you're in the Boston area and want to come to a game day and maybe be on streams, come on, reach out to me. Let me know. But I feel like it was relatively simple. Like, I, I kind of have a built-in stuff almost anywhere I move, you know, or anywhere I go. So it didn't seem that hard. It didn't stick out to me. Um, Because, I mean, I'm trying to think. There were a lot of people up for it. Like, Shrey was early on. I think Ken was. Some of the folks that aren't around anymore, like, so, yeah. I feel like that was relatively simple. Again, if I wasn't Edward from Heavy Cardboard and I was just Edward, I think it might be a little different. Uh, H3 says, we need more Age of Steam, Edward. I realize you didn't, uh, I realize you did not st stream Pittsburgh yet. I don't know if I have the Pittsburgh map, to be clear. Uh, the next three player, um, it's a scheduling thing, trying to get the people available along with the other stuff that I, I want streamed. So if there was this week, like the week we're in, if there was a night that me, Shrey, and Martin were available, then we were going to do uh, the steampunk one. But so you all have to understand. Every, every week, no, let me back up. There is a ever evolving scheduling sheet that everybody that is in our game group here has access to. And it's broken down by weeks. And within a week, everybody puts their availability. Okay. Uh, not only their availability Monday through Sunday, but also how many nights they're willing to play games and how many nights they're willing to stream. Because just because they're willing to play games doesn't mean you always want to be on TV. Doesn't mean you always want to be on camera, right? Which is completely reasonable. So, for instance, this week, um, I knew uh, Shrey said two and two. Uh, he was available multiple days, but he was willing to stream two nights and, and play two nights. Uh, Martin Fowler was... Normally, it's play two nights, stream one night. That's usually his MO, which is totally fine. This week was two and two. And so I was like, awesome. Okay, cool. But then the way everybody else's availability played out, and because Kyle was only available on Monday, and I know Shrey was down to do a Furnace, so I had Shrey and Kyle, and Derek is Derek is always available just about, unless he's gone uh, to a convention or something. So he's kind of my, oh, I need somebody, Derek, jump in type thing, which I appreciate. But I also schedule him, obviously. So there was that. But then I knew Shrey and Fowler both would want to do Age of Industry. So I'm like, okay. But now I've used up Shrey's two nights for that. And I know he's interested in uh, the Age of Steam, Steam Steampunk map. And that's three players. So I couldn't bring Shrey in, even though I had Fowler available for a second night. But I didn't have other people. So it just didn't work out. So these are the scheduling, juggling that I have to do. And I set the schedule up for the, pro for the following week on Saturday nights. Um, ideally, ideally it would be able to go out two weeks, but that is a, that's all comes down to the availability of everybody else. So on days that I am doing solo stuff, i.e. yesterday and today, um, yesterday I was supposed to go on a date with Jess, but things conflicted, uh, on her end. So that didn't work out. But the reason I was doing solo stuff is I wasn't available on Wednesday night and then Thursday night, um, my ducks are playing in in tournament, and I want to watch that. So that's why we're doing afternoon stuff. So those nights were unavailable, and yeah. So anyway, that that's what all goes into that process. So it really, it's a hundred percent. Unless I'm going to a convention or I I have a a kid thing going on, like I do on Saturday for winter percussion, uh, for the umpteenth week in a row, it feels like. Uh, Outside of that, it, I'm at the mercy of other people's schedules. 
So Kyle's like, hey, I'm available Friday afternoon. Okay, cool. Let's stream something. Awesome. That type thing. So that's how that works. And I try and mix up the players on all of this, um, both for an entertainment value, but also so you don't see the same people on the same stuff all the time. Uh, it's funny, like there for a while, John and Kyle were only making it on to Age of Steam streams, and now they're going on anything but, but John's like, more Age of Steam, please. And I'm like, I gotta make it all work. So, yeah, there you go. So that's how that goes. Hi, Steph. Hope, hope the weather's nice in Hamburg. What 18xx game would you suggest, if any, if you want to step up from the garage? I don't know what that means. Spitesky, I realize you probably asked this about an hour ago, 40 minutes ago. Um, but if you want to circle back, um, I will I will try and I'll, I'll monitor the live chat as well as where I'm at on old chat. Uh, I don't know what you mean by step up from the garage. Oh, great. Alyssa says it's even colder up there. So, yeah, it's it's that wind is brutal down here. It's dry. It's clear. It's nice. Apparently, it rained overnight. There's some ice out there. That wind is just brutal. And it's just, it's wrecking trash cans all over the place out there right now. Oh, I see, Spitesky. I see. Went down a little bit. You meant, uh, okay, let me let me ask that question. Let me read that again. Spitesky says, what 18xx game would you suggest, if any, if I want to step up from the gauge, meaning like dual gauge games, I, Irish gauge, maybe something like that, I think, in Age of Steam. I mean, here's the thing, Spitesky, and this is universal. Whether you're coming into it cold, which it sounds like you are, uh, no Age of Steam experience. The age-old recommendation, 1846, 1889, um, 18 Chesapeake. Those are always the three kind of baseline get you into 18xx. However, if you're a solo player, 1862 has some very non-traditional stuff. A lot of MacGuffins, meaning a lot of chrome, a lot of non-traditional things, and a lot of... It's hard to wrap your head around, especially coming into it cold. However, because you're coming into it cold, cold meaning no experience, you don't have to unlearn certain things with 1862. So normally, for instance, a an 18xx is either a fully full capitalization game, meaning when a company floats, it gets all of its 100% of its treasury from the bank. Or it's a partial capital capitalization game, meaning it gets partial depending and then it it gets more into its treasury whenever shares are sold from its own treasury. 1862 has both. Normally, in 18xx games, uh, there are one type of train. In 1862, there are three types of trains. So it adds a lot of overhead. However, if you were to learn that as your first, and I'm not, I'm not 100% convinced that I should recommend this, but here's the logic behind it. If you were to go into 1862 as your first 18xx game, you learn all of this stuff, okay? And the merging and all of this. And then if you were to go to another 18xx game that doesn't have this level of overhead, and you're like, oh, this only has partial cap. Oh, this only has full cap. Oh, it only has a hex train or it only has a standard, uh, you know, cities and doinks train. It almost feels easier because you've climbed that mountain on that first one. Plus, 62 allows you to play it solo and you can play it at your own pace, even though it has a lot of things in it and the way it works 
isn't exactly how it plays multiplayer. It still has a lot of the same mechanisms, it has the same trains, partial cap versus full cap, merging, all that stuff. So if you're into eating the full meal, then maybe you jump into that. Plus, 62 is one of those rare games that legitimately plays amazing across the entire player count. I mean, there aren't many games that say that, period. Much less in 18xx, and you can solo it. So, I will say, if you want to have a normal entry, 1889, 18 Chesapeake, 1846. Those are the three defaults that I fall back on. But if you want the full Monty. Now, look, there are still a whole lot of other bigger games than 62. There's 1817 and it's Ilk. I think it's 41 or 42 has companies that can invest in other companies. Like, there are, there are way deeper games. But I'm just saying, 62... Because of the solo and all that other stuff, if you want the full Monty, that's an option. Okay? So, anyway, I hope that helps. That is, look, that is a really long-winded way of saying it, but I want you to understand the thought process behind why I would recommend something like that as well. Okay? Has Jess gotten any more uh, new Legos uh, to build? She's got plenty that she hasn't built. But I don't know that, it, like, she... I know she got, like, uh, f uh, some flower... I got her some flower bouquet uh, Lego stuff. But I don't think she wants to be on camera. So, that's moot. But, no, I don't think there's any a whole lot of... I, I also bought her the Porsche 911 and the Vespa one. A while back and this is a couple years ago and they're still unbuilt so those are options uh thomas asks are you planning to play vimar again yes and we're planning on streaming it as well very interested in picking up the game but would like to see a couple more rounds oh for sure um again reference back where i said i'm at the mercy of other people's schedules uh, i'm hoping i know there was tentative discussion about this uh, I, I don't quote me on this, but I think we were talking the 31st, which is a Sunday, I think, but there's that. Okay. So I think we're talking and we'll start early in the day, like 10 AM, something like that, maybe for Weimar on the 31st, if we do it then. In the grand hopes that it'll go all six hours. All right. Alyssa says it's about 10 degrees up there in freedom degrees, 10 minus 10 in real degrees. Ouch. Uh, Sebastian, is Robinson Caruso a game you could see being played at HCHQ? As a solo, I don't own it. Um, if, if somebody wanted to get me a copy, I would give it a try as a solo. Uh, wandering to my left and seeing the new big collection box, a uh, question that popped up. Did did Robinson Crusoe get a recent reprint or something? Let me um, let me look at that. By the way, is anybody watching over on Twitch? Not really. All right. I, I just want to make sure Twitch doesn't feel like I'm ignoring their questions. So let me look. So I see the, the main the adventures on Cursed Island re-implemented by First Martians. Oh, interesting. And then, uh, no. No, that's it. So really, First Martians re-implemented Robinson Crusoe. So is it the same mechanism in that? I haven't played either one. Um, so I don't know. If I were to get a copy, I would be willing to stream it as a solo. So there's that. Same with same with First Martians. Don't own that either. Sorry, Ignacy. I know both those are yours. Uh, Steph, I'd like to see more Age of Steam. Reference what I was just talking about.
Ah, there you go. Oh, ha. Okay, sorry. I, I was trying to figure out what the hell y'all were talking about. Sandy. Yes, Sandy is, is the one from British Baking, uh, the Great British Bake Off that I, we miss. Sandy was great. Um, no, Noel's wonderful. He is hysterical. I love Noel. He's my favorite vamp. He's, he's wonderful. But yeah, Sandy is it. Yeah. Uh, OG Iron Chef was amazing. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, it doesn't hold up as well, but have y'all ever watched Silent Library? Not the American version. Japanese version. God bless them. Some of that is still hysterical to me. Uh, Bree says Sandy uh, Tokesvig. Yeah. Um, so well done, Gusarino. You're the one that nailed it first. And then Thomas and Jonathan. And then Eric and Bree. Uh, and then Bree. That's impressive, y'all. Well done, you. Says uh, she's on QI now, or is that she or key? Or I, I don't know what that is. I don't know that. But yeah, she was great. Sandy was awesome. Uh, what's the game that you played on stream that you were most surprised that you enjoyed? Uh, just from a recency bias? World Wonders. I totally thought it was going to be a throwaway. Like, it was a whatever game, right? Sure, I'll stream it, whatever. Um, and that surprised the heck out of me. Uh, how much I enjoyed it. Legitimately, look, I, I didn't get paid to do that. Um, I just streamed it because Derek brought it over. He's like, hey... This is a game you can learn in two seconds and you can solo stream it if you want. I was like, cool, add it to the pile. So he did. And I was like, thanks, cool. One empty. By the way, I got this little um, Mr. Coffee thing. It's supposed to keep your cup warm. It not great. Can't recommend. Have you all seen those those cup warmer or like the the I, I don't even I, I don't know if they're Bluetooth or what, but the cups that will you can set the exact temperature you want to keep your tea at. I would love one of those. I saw it at Costco a number of months ago and it was like a hundred bucks and I was like for a coffee cup? What? No. But if it were to arrive as a gift, just saying, I would love one of those and I would sing your praises. So instead, we just have my insulated. This one's Gem Mitra. Ooh, ha, that's hot. All right, so let's see. Um, so, okay, Vimar... To be clear, I was I've been excited about it for a number of years. Like I've kind of loosely followed it, uh, what Matthias Kramer was doing with with Weimar. So I wasn't surprised that I like it, but it is the game that I am most wanting. To, like I'm kind of pissed that the, that we got to do Salt and Sea tomorrow because I really I, I really just want to play more Weimar tomorrow. So that would be cool. And that's not to disparage Salt and Sea. Uh, by the way, we're doing a patron-only stream uh, as a learning game for uh, the folks that haven't played Salt and Sea, so we could stream it on Sunday. Uh, that, that's not, it's just I really just want to play more Vimar. That's the game that really I'm Jones in for uh, right now. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually looking at the schedule on Friday. John, Paul, yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, Ken's not available. If Ken were available, we'd be streaming it tomorrow. Boo. So, that's where we're at on that. I mean, I'm not throwing Ken under the bus. Everybody has their own light. Like, Heavy Cardboard isn't their show. I get it. I, I Look, I'm grateful for the amount of time. I'm just saying I really want to play Weimar, damn it. Ah! So, getting people available to play that. But yeah, honestly, World Wonders was the biggest surprise I've had in a while. How much I liked it. Uh, you know what? Because y'all, I should be more prepared for this. I can't remember what we streamed last week. So let me go and look at what we played recently. To answer, so that I give a second one. Really enjoyed that Minnesota map 
for Age of Industry. That was really good. Uh, really enjoyed uh, the furnace with Interbellum and the uh, the set order, the advanced, you know, the, okay, you put it down and you just operate it left to right. Ivan Lashin, uh, the the designer, he was he even said, yeah, it's easier to teach new players and that is the best way to play it. I fully agree with him wholeheartedly on that. Um, I want to play more Galactic Cruise. I still have the prototype, but honestly, I want to play it with the expansions that I don't have. Sad. Yeah, I I think we'll go with that. We'll call it, we'll call that good for games that I've enjoyed and surprised a little bit in in the ways that we uh, that we played them. So there's that. Oh, Robin says I met Sandy in the local supermarket back in '97. Was she so? Again, she obviously is a celebrity or an actress or something over in the UK. I'm unfamiliar with any of her work outside of the Great British Baking Show. So was she active as on being on TV in some form or fashion back then in 97? I assume so, because you didn't just run into and like, oh, you must be Sandy. You wouldn't know her otherwise. So I guess that makes sense. Durr. Are we going to play the ARCs campaign with a fixed group similar to what you did with Oath? I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of odd, though. Like, I haven't heard from Leader Games or or Cole. I've reached out to Cole about Molly House. I'm going to see Cole in a couple weeks, so we'll talk to him then. Honestly, about both those things. So I'll let you know then. So we'll see, maybe. Oh, that's awesome. Gusarino says, I was on a quiz show hosted by Sandy. So consider her a close personal friend. That's awesome. You know what? A quiz show and Gusarino, that totally makes sense to me. I don't know about y'all, but yeah, those two things fit. Absolutely. Steph, do you plan on going to Essen this year? Planning on? I can't say that. Hoping to, damn Skippy. I will know. By midsummer, for sure. And here's the thing. If I do go, I need a place to stay. Anybody got an extra bed at Essen? Just saying. If you do, let me know. Yeah, John, I'm just saying. I'm available for Weimar. I am. It's you, Ken, and Paul. Let's go, people. Just saying. Oh, people and their kids and their wives and lives. and psh, How dare they? Imperial Struggle. It's over there. Ken and I are going to do another Twilight Struggle first before we move on to Imperial Struggle. But then we're going to do it. By the way, um, yeah, so I... I read all the comments and I respond to a lot of them that y'all leave on the various, uh, on the various streams, even when that, what kills me and God bless them. Y'all that ask rules questions on a game four years ago, honestly, or, or you highlight that we forgot to take a resource from a stream four years ago. God bless you. I appreciate that. But honestly, if you're going to ask a rules question and it's more than a week old, ask it on BGG. Um, so you're just going to do better on that because I'm going to have to go back. I'm not going to rewatch the stream and I'm not going to relearn the game. So I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm not disparaging just letting y'all know, I appreciate the comments. It helps with the algorithm, so please leave comments. Um, although, although I will say, this one cracked me up uh, uh, on Twilight Struggle. Edward played abysmally and had bad luck on top of it. My response, sorry, I'll try and do better next time. Like, thanks for the comment, I think. I think. <laughs> uh, 
just but yeah i read all y'all's comments don't respond to everyone but i i respond to a fair bit of them so anyway it just cracked me up uh let's see oh rocky nice of you to join us thanks hi eric block and key how would you stream that i have ways it it it's gonna get streamed i'm excited about being able to do that one that's a clever clever game that you have to get down at a level to be able to do that but i think we can A tour of the library, uh, Robin says, I seem to recall one a long time ago. I mean, I suppose I could, um, but it can't be, it's not going to be live um, unless I did it on my phone. Honestly, that would probably be a Twitch thing, uh, Twitch only. And the reason is, I guess I could do it on YouTube as well, but it would be a, I'll do a tour, but I'm taking it down type thing because I don't want to show that off publicly. And as far as the setup here in the studio, no. I put in way too many hundreds of hours in work to, nah. Just not interested in sharing that. Uh, Strybarn says, say you attend a board game weekend with a relatively small group, 40 to 60, of mostly unfamiliar gamers. Okay. I attend a board game weekend with a relatively small group of 40 to 60 of uh, mostly unfamiliar board, uh, mostly unfamiliar gamers. I've said it. Uh, hotel, conference area, free coffee, food. As an attendee, which games would you bring playing to play? Um, well, if I'm going to it, then we're playing. I, I'm, I'm only going to want to. Here's the thing. There are only three conventions where I play games at. Circle DC, HeavyCon, and The Gathering of Friends. Every other convention I don't play games at, I'm just working. And by working, I mean, whether it's networking or meeting people or, I'm doing all of that at these other ones, but it's less about that and it's more about playing games. But assuming it's one of those, right now, Weimar, Uh, bigger games that I normally can't get played or classics that I can't get played. So, like, I, I, I'd, I'd be down to play, like, some Dominant Species. Um, Struggle Vampires. I'm trying to think of, like, the bigger games. Yeah, stuff like that, I think. That's what I would be more inclined to in, in, in games that I just don't get a chance to play much. There's a reason we were playing um, Crystal Palace so much because we were able to and I just I wanted to and Alyssa wanted to and yeah, that works. Uh, Tricarian would be another one. But the other tricky part is with these bigger games playing with strangers. I always worry like am I the one te if I'm teaching the game fine, but if other people are teaching Let's just say some people teaching isn't their strong point, even though they're the ones teaching it. So, yeah, stuff that I couldn't get played normally, I think. Uh, stuff that I could play here. Again, I'm I'm a, in a bit of a unique situation in that I do this every day. Or at least, you know, as my day job, so to speak. So I get the opportunity that a lot of y'all don't get, which I'm grateful for. But gaming is different for me than it is for a lot of y'all. So if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Steph, do I plan to stream 21 Moon? Um, I believe that's in new 18xx, I think. Uh, if I got a copy... If I got a copy, we, we could maybe do that. Jess just arrived at uh, PAX East, so she's just letting me know she made it safely.
a moment while I text her. Sorry. All right, done. All right, uh, let's see. Yeah, 21, uh, I suppose maybe we could maybe do it on uh, 18xx.games. But the good news is I've gotten back to requesting games from publishers. So that's good. There for a while, I just stopped. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we're getting back into things. Hey, Kyle and Alyssa. Hi. Uh, let's see. Schwam Clutch says, Reds fan here. The injuries have already been absolutely brutal. Bro, I'm telling you, man. Like, come on with that. But hey, good to know. Go Reds. So, anyway. Ah! Just frustrated injuries. Look, it happens, right? I mean, the Marlins are suffering. A lot of teams are suffering, but oh well. Uh, Brianna says, our five-year-old knows every dinosaur proper name. It's insane. I never thought I'd know as much about dinosaurs as I do. You're a five-year-old. So our, let's see, he hasn't turned 15 yet. He's 14. So he is, look, I know people brag about their kids and such, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah. But it's freakish in a good way how much of a savant he is regarding language. Um, so with Duolingo, it makes learning languages legitimately easy. Look, not endorsed by or not uh, sponsored by Duolingo, but he's in a process of learning like 13 different languages at the same time. And he's also a savant when it comes to percussion instruments and, and the piano. Not like can, you know, not going to be in the orchestra at 15 Savant, but really good at his stuff. All of our conversations are music or, or language. When we text, he texts back in Chinese, you know, in, in Mandarin mostly, um, or maybe in Spanish. Uh, and it's, it's, or in Polish, it's, it's freakish. He knows things about language that, like, he just, like, oh, yeah, he's, like, oh, and there's, if you change this letter, it mean it, it's just, I'm a big dumb animal when it comes to this stuff, and I'm just, and I tell him, I'm, like, look, you're way over my head on this stuff, it, but I will say, it's awfully impressive that you know all this, and it's just, he, he needed to do a little video uh, for a Spanish class one night when I was making tacos and he's like, yeah, I got to just write a couple of sentences. He wrote an entire paragraph and read it, what he wrote. And I swear to God, he sounded Spanish it, or, or, or Mexican, like Spanish was his native language. It was, it's amazing. It really is. So pretty, pretty cool. So I get that with kids on how they pick this stuff up. Wow. Really, really impressive. Anyway. Forest of Glass. Hi, over on Twitch. Long time low key herd member. I appreciate you chiming in. Welcome and thanks for being a member of the herd. Was wondering if you wanted to take a moment to say anything about what's going on in Gaza. I think it's really, really a shame on both sides of things. So it's hard to say that either side is in the right. Um, but I do think that maybe Israel's taken it a little far. And by a little far, I mean really far. Too far. Um, I, in a perfect world, it's 2,000 plus years of strife going on in the Middle East. They haven't figured it out yet. I don't think they're going to. But man, it would be great if we could figure out a way. I watched a thing on John, John Oliver. I think it was John Oliver that did it on the Middle East. Um, and just... Israeli and the Arab issues 
going on over there. I've watched a lot of stuff, but no, it's... War doesn't solve anything. Ever. So, yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like to be over there involved in that. And it's horrible for all involved. I hope it stops soon. So, there you go. Not the forum to get political on this. Um, but yeah, just as a Marine, war sucks. No, I, I promise you that there is a tiny fraction of a fraction of people that are either in the military or were in the military that are gung-ho about conflict. Nobody wants it. Chris says, I know Shrey's a Newcastle fan. Edward, do you have a favorite football club? Yeah, Dallas Cowboys. And it sucks being a Cowboys fan. Oh, you meant soccer. See what I did there? No, I do not. Um, I, I've tried to get into soccer. Just can't. Just not my, not my cup of tea. Just, just can't. Sorry. Uh, Genway says, I'm glad the Cubs didn't go on a shopping spree, but they got to get, uh, they got Bellinger back. I think it's the, I think it's the Cubs and Reds in the central. Although, caveat, with the injuries, I don't know how good we're going to be until they come back. And let's face it, the thing that really sucks about TJ Friedel's wrist injury, wrist injuries sap your power for a year. Historically, players, even when they come back healthy, their power is just not there. So, although Friedel's not a power hitter, he's our leadoff guy, still, you know, things that would be hard hit into the gap maybe aren't now. I'm hoping. But I do think uh, it, based on health, if healthy, I think it's the Cubs and Reds. And I think it's the Reds. I think. We'll see. Ultimate Frisbee. I, that's like Frisbee meets football, I think, right? I think. So, yeah, I think so. Uh, Strybarn, if you weren't in aviation or board game business, what would you have liked pursued a career-wise? Okay. So, as an adult, and by adult, I mean from 18 on, my jobs have consisted of, obviously, being in the military, being in the Marine Corps, but working uh, avionics on F-18s. I got out three days before 9-11, couldn't get an aviation job, obviously. So I waited tables. Um, and so I, I, I grew up in the restaurant industry anyway. So that comes natural. Uh, there's a part of me that always wanted to open a restaurant, but I also know, A, running a restaurant is insane. And if there's ever a industry that pushes you towards drugs, uh, from what I'm gathering, um, the restaurant hospitality industry is kind of it and, and you, you can't have it. It's hard to have a family. It's all those things. So probably not realistic there. Then after that, I got back into aviation, um, and then quit that to play poker for a living. The government took online poker away. So I quit doing that. Went back into aviation because it's the only way I can make the bills. And then got into this. So if I couldn't do any of those things, and poker is just a sick way of making a living, um, but man, it was so much fun at, at times, and there was nothing more stressful or more make you question everything in your life than when you're on a downswing in poker. Whew, it's tough. But if I... Like, knowing what I know now, I think I could have been a, I think I could have been a color analyst in sports. Uh, look, I have a face for radio, and I have a voice not for radio. I don't know about play-by-play, -play, but 
for TV analyst for sports, I think I would have done a really good job, being honest. Uh, what else would I have gotten into? Something that pays a lot more money, too. I'm tired of worrying about paycheck to paycheck. So there's that. So there you go. There you go. That's 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 the God's honest truth. Everybody wants a Lincoln cam now. That's a, put a hook up a GoPro. Watching him run with that, that would be awesome. I I should just just putting that away in the uh, in the old brain housing group there. Better March than September for the injuries. I mean, look, the Reds prove that if you get off to a horrendous start, you can't recover. Whereas, when you're heading into the playoffs, it's demoralizing, but at least you've had a good season. So I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I guess it depends... Kind of, right? Because it, if the team can tread water until the players come back, then, yeah, you can recover from that. But if they can't, I don't know. I think there's debate there. Because in March, you have time to make up. S September, you don't, because the playoffs, right, are right around the corner. So, I hear you. Allen, go Reds. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Historically, back when I was punching a clock on a wall... Uh, opening day for the Reds. That's a that's a that's a holiday for me. You know what? Let me ask you. Okay, look, this this is probably a stupid idea. Okay. Um. I don't think I would do it publicly, <laughs> but and I can't stream it. But I can have the game on and watch it on opening day. If y'all want to join me for that, we could have like a watch party. Maybe I could do it live. I just, I would have to have it in my headphones to where y'all couldn't hear it. Right? And I could watch it and we could, we could, we could do that. What do you think of that idea? Just saying. That's a fun idea. Uh, Brianna, gonna miss, miss y'all going to HeavyCon this year. Fair. But you have a good re reason. How's how's Asher? Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, less pukey now. I hope. Strybarn, considering all the work uh, with the new equipment, I, I I assume you mean in the studio. What tools have been quintessential to you? Uh, by tools, what do you mean? Unpack that, and then I'll I'll circle back on it. All right. Jonathan says, wish I could join you at Circle DC. It's not even that far a drive from me. Why can't you? I think there's still like maybe two tur two tickets left. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, and uh, Derek says over on Twitch, Cross Bronx Expressway. Nice. Hoping that it'll release. It's been in development for so long. I wanted to play it because I wanted to be able to talk to you all about it. And I've heard good things. Uh, all right, uh, and trillies, and trillies, and Antry asks, newish to the channel, and I'm not sure what you mean by glory to Rome, like in the playthroughs, you have an over-under on glory to Rome's. What are you referring to? Uh, go fornicate with yourself. <laughs> it's basically a, 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 a safer work way of saying to... Whatever is going on, be it the other players, the bot, y'all, because you say something, you know, in a, in a playful way. It's a playful way of saying, oh my God, are you kidding me? How did you do that? And it comes from the game Glory to Rome. So there you go. Hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. A and B, have some fun with it. So there are, anybody, can anybody tell what that is? Let me scoot that over a little. How many numbers is that? How many glory to Rome's? 
That's MDCCL. By the way, I actually have on my uh, on on my Chrome. I actually have a Roman numeral counter thing on there that you just write in the letters and it tells you how many numbers and or vice versa, so that I can update this because this is getting to be a whole lot of whole lot of stuff numbers that are beyond me. I think that's seventeen fifty. I think I think Alyssa's right. Uh, so there have been seventeen hundred. And 50, glory to Rome's. Usually between the players, sometimes towards the game, sometimes to some of y'all, and sometimes from y'all to uh, usually to me, because I made you buy a game. And you're welcome for that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Rocky, I swear. I said I'd be able to watch the whole thing and immediately had a call come in. You're, you're, you're welcome for jinxing it. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, Jonathan says, if you learn about the Hunt for Blackbeard game, please share about it uh, with us. Yeah, um, so Volko's running a bunch of games of it. I, to me, the one that I signed up for sounded more interesting to me. Uh, what was that? That was Coast Watchers. But I will definitely be talking to Volko about uh, the Blackbeard game as well as uh, watching it and, and kind of like hovering and kind of seeing it, even if I don't get to play it, for sure. Uh, definitely going to try and bring Volko up to HeavyCon as well. So we'll see what his schedule looks like. Same with uh, Mark Herman. But again, it all depends on their schedule. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Circle DC. Um, if y'all could collectively wish for good weather on April 4th in DC, around 4 p.m., that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So the game goes, well, April weather, you never know. Um, but either way, I'm going to crush the hell out of that buffet. Let me tell you. Woo! Uh, yes, uh, Empire of the Sun. So it's funny. When, when Jess and I went to Mark Herman's summer house on the Cape. Yeah, name dropping. Yeah, I did that. Uh, also, where I, where I retired from playing Churchill, having beaten Jess and Mark in Churchill. Can't ever play it again. But uh, he was like, yeah, it's really not a hard game. I can teach you how to play Empire of the Sun in 10 minutes. I was like, <laughs> go. All right, let's see. And I mean, high level Todd. But so, yeah, I figure if I can get Mark into the studio, might as well do that. Uh, Schwam Clutch says, I hope you're stopping in Buffalo for wings and be uh, beef on whack. Um, so I know the anchor bar in Buffalo, I, like I, I, I need to at some point. So I'm hoping we could, we could stop in Buffalo, uh, on the way up there for one of them. I like beef on whack. Just thinks they're too salty, which fair, but yeah, there is delicious sandwich. Agreed. But maybe we stop at the Anchor Bar and get some wings. Unless you have a recommendation for better wings. But, I mean, that's where they're from, right? Oh, God. Okay, Guslerino. If all the museums and art galleries in the world got together and said, out of appreciation for heavy cardboard, you could take any one artwork or historical artifact to keep, what would you choose? I don't know. I'm trying to think like 
what really speaks to me, right? Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. But here's the thing. Owning something really historical, like significant, right? And keeping it to yourself doesn't feel right. So, like, I would donate it back, but it would be somewhere close to me. Um, I don't know. Probably the thing that I think I'm most fascinated about in history, not the, but one of, because history is a long time. Probably something related to Philip II. I know that's probably not at all what you would have anticipated me saying, but like if there was some sort of small heirloom or something of his, like that he owned or had or, and I don't know if anything like that exists because in my opinion, everybody raves over Alexander the Great and what a amazing genius he was. But Philip II, his daddy, that was a bad man. And without him, I mean, basically, Alex just took what his dad was doing and put it on a bigger scale. So I think because of all the lineage of that, I think that would be pretty cool to have. Something like that. Yeah, I think so. Um, but look, I, I, there's so much. Like one thing, I'll be honest. There was a piece of artwork in Newburyport in a gallery that, oh my God, this painting was unbelievable. And look, Jess is at Paxi. She's not watching. I don't know the name of the gallery. And Newburyport is a tiny little town uh, up on the Massachusetts, New Hampshire border. Massachusetts, mate. Yeah, right, right in there. Um, and it was, it had this, it was basically this storm. And it had these, these bar, this barn on this hill. And it was just the way the 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 type of paint that was used made the barn just pop, and it was a very vibrant red against the the storm clouds in the back, and it was it was unbelievably striking. So that would be cool. Although I will say, for my 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 Christmas present, just have I have I mentioned this? I don't know if I have. She bought me. She went way out of line on this, but, um, uh, like, yeah, uh, she asked if I could have any artwork, what would I have? Like a realistic, real, like not a Rembrandt or a Monet or Bingo or whatever. But I, I always said I was struck by the Mona cat. Um, and she went and she she bought a lithograph of it. And so it's hanging at the house. And it's unbelievable. So it's the one real piece of artwork I have. So that's cool. Anyway. That was a very long answer to a not long question. But there you go. Uh, oh, hey, Paul. Uvula Bob, for those at home. Uh, for my money, the best PC game music right now is Anno 1800 or Against the Storm. Now, to be clear to everybody, all Paul plays is Against the Storm. That's it. <laughs> uh, Mentat, will you be doing a top 50 again soon? If by soon you mean before HeavyCon? Yes. Skyrim soundtrack. Oh, that that's solid. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that one. That I can speak to. Okay.
Uh, H3 says, I really like the recent Lisboa revisit. How do you feel about it now? I enjoyed it more than I remembered enjoying. So it's funny. It's, I remember loving it. Hey, guess what? It won the Golden Elephant Award. And then I was like, it just never was one to come out to the, t on the table again. It just, meh. Um, and then it was all but not forced on me, but strongly suggested. And I was like, you know what? Sure, I will. Even though I was like, eh, I really wasn't into it. I'm really glad we did because really enjoyed it. Really, really did. Even though apparently we set up the card deck wrong. I, I was told in the comments. Dinosaur Barbecue. Derek, is that is that a uh, is that a gathering Niagara slash Buffalo? Is that? By the way, are we gonna are we gonna carpool up there? You, me, and Jess? I don't know. Uh, Spitesky, when when are we coming to New Zealand? If I can ever afford to do the heavy cardboard around the world thing again, that would that would probably be when. Rocky says Helldivers 2. I, I feel like that that's all the rage right now. What I, I have not looked into it at all. I've been look, I've been for the last month I've been swimming in heavy cardboard. I live in this chair for like 16, 18 hours a day lately. So I, I know Helldivers 2 is super popular, but I know nothing about it. Video game for those at home. Yes, Derek is the easy one to schedule. That is true. I, I am grateful. Thank you. Vanuatu. Uh, that actually got onto the scheduling list. It's not scheduled, but it's on the short list to be streamed. That reminds me, I need to... Add it up here because these are on the short list games up here. You know what? Not something I was going to do, but give me a second and I might. There we go. Uh, that won't work. Hold on. I have a feeling it won't work because... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's my bad. Ah. Okay, there. I might be able to show you all some of that, but I don't know if I can without getting the rest of the infrastructure in here, and that. And if so, then I won't do it. Uh, any thoughts on video games adopted to cardboard? Uh, I just got the Pledge Manager for Stellar Stellaris. Um, there have been a number of them have, I, I don't know. I'm going to ask you all for this one. Is there anything that you thought was a good port from video games? I, I, I'm trying to remember, trying to think of any. Ah, come on. Why are you not cooperating? Huh. Uh, it's possible that... Oh, because I'm moving the wrong one. There we go. Let me see if we can do this. Give me a second. Yeah! There you go. That works. Cool. There you go. So that is the shelf. Hey, here's another advantage of the new PTZ. Uh, that is the shelf of on the short list of games. So there we go. Okay. And then there's the collector's edition of Twilight Struggle. And yeah. Anyway. But yeah. Um, I need to add Vanuatu onto that. And apparently um, distilled. Apparently, I will, I will, that which is currently here. I think it's, it's Derek or John's copy I have right now. 
Just making notes. There we go. Cool. All right. Uh, need to play distill, George says. Okay, I hear you. Have not yet. I mean, the idea behind it, like the theme behind it is pretty cool. Oh, speaking of which, there was a game that I reached out for, in fact, specifically yesterday, that, let me look at the um, Circle DC. Uh, there is a game here that somebody uh, posted that normally would be too light, I think, for the show. But I did some reading on it, and it sounded actually really, really interesting to me. It's a light worker placement, like, dripping in theme. A Union Stockyards. Anybody familiar with that one? Uh, so I, I literally reached out to him yesterday, last night, after reading up about it. And I was like, hey, can we, can we get a copy of this? And if so, then we'll stream it. Um... So, we'll see. Okay, cool. All right, anyway. So, yeah, Union Stockyards. Uh, so, somebody scheduled that at, um, at Circle DC and sounded really interesting to me. Anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I was I was reading and trying to make heads or tails of this comment. Um, I have an hour and a half to catch up. I can do that. Yeah, we got it. Uh, so Joker ES, to answer Seattle Sasquatches about uh, board game adaptations of video games, uh, Joker brings up a good point, says, oh, I have my two cents. Computers can offload a lot of the tedium by managing values and introducing randomness into a game without friction. Darkest Dungeon is a cautionary tale. Excuse me, on that. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I'm curious. Like, games like Slay the Spire, which I love, 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 as a video game. Don't know how much I'm going to want to do that as a board game. I don't know. So there's one. Okay. More Age of Steam. I hear y'all. Yeah, okay. So it's John's copy of Distilled. All right, cool. Favorite Lacerda. Depends on the day, right? I still love Vinos. Really like, really, really like the gallerist. I want to play Inventions again. So it depends on the day on that. Uh, the only one that that like really wouldn't be would be uh, would be escape plan or his Mercado whatever the smaller one not really no yes Brianna sixty two is phenomenal Private Vendetta, circling back, because again, I'm like an hour and a half behind, uh, brings up a good point that the 62 rulebook kind of assumes previous knowledge from 18xx games. Might I suggest watching our live streams to help with that? Is there a Lacerda game that is the best solo mode and also good or great multiplayer? Tyler asks. Uh... In my opinion, far and away, The Gallerist. Not even a question. Hard stop. Of the ones I've played, yes. Oh, Joe says, 62 was my first 18xx and Private Vendetta, what, what he said about the rulebook inferring things, but the teach helped from our stream. So there you go. Awesome. Age of Steam Con. When is it? Chris?
We have not replayed Panama for Age of Steam yet. Um, so no. Hello, Iraq over on uh, Twitch. Uh, William asked, why doesn't Jess play on stream anymore? Uh, I miss watching her wreck everyone. Um, honestly, she's not comfortable. Uh, the critique and the comments from some people, she just, it's not her cup of tea. She's not comfortable. I'm certainly not going to uh, push her to do so. So, the end. Very simple answer. But she did say she's willing to do the podcast. So there's that. Oh, I, I assume Sebastian's talking about Robinson Crusoe, that there's a new adventures book with multiple scenarios. Okay. Oh, uh, Virgil Cummings said, uh, are you going to do another tricky night? So like a trio of trick takers sometime soon. If so, Jiraku, haven't we streamed Jiraku a couple times? I feel like we have. Feel like so. Uh, by the way, uh, we, I literally just got confirmation just before this stream, um, that we have, we need to be careful about this. We are in agreement. Look, I don't have signed documents for sponsored streams. We just have agreements and then I, we agree and. They ship me games, I ship them an invoice, they pay, we stream, okay. Anyway, for a number of trick-taking games coming from Bezier Games, as well as some other stuff that I'm not at liberty to discuss right now, um, so there's gonna be a number of trick-taking games there that we're going to be st uh, streaming, as well as City Tricks. This is probably going to get streamed next week. 18xx Trick Taker. Yes, really. And it does work pretty well. I think. At least we think so. Some of us did, at least. So, there's that. Uh, who won the steps to prepare the show? It's still a work in progress. I've been doing a lot of streams lately, so it's still a work in progress. And, honestly, with the new intro stuff, more steps get, get added. So it's, and then I have to not only get through all of the streaming stuff, but then the after stream for end, end screen boxes and all that stuff. So, are you gonna make a video about Derek Carr? Oh, this? Why yes, yes we are. Uh, so, the tentative plan is to have our second play of this be a patron-only stream on Saturday. That is going to depend on winter percussion uh, and when that is again. But the if it's not next week, it will be the following week uh, for Darrow Carr. So that will be before I leave for Circle DC, which I leave on the 3rd of April. So it'll be publicly streamed before that. And then the patron only stream either Saturday or next week. The mighty boosh stuff with Noel on great British baking show. I, I don't know what that is. I feel so like it's an inside joke that I don't get because not don't watch a lot of British TV. Okay, William says, yeah, there's a recent new super deluxe Robinson Cruz. I know nothing about it, um, but if we were to obtain a copy, then sure, I'd be willing to do it. Hey, Rob. Okay, and apparently QI is a British panel show. It's on YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Bree. She's also very excited that I enjoyed World Wonder so much. Me too. Because you know what? I like streaming fun games. And fun, again, to me, might be different than maybe other folks. But yeah, I don't have to do well or play well or it could be really hard, but it was fun. 
and this it was hard but in the right way you know what i mean ah the ember mug uh uh Buchiza over on Twitch says, it's okay. That's the fancy one that started it. It has a heat pass through th thing. Uh, Joker says, I would love something that keeps my tea the right temperature. Always accepting gifts and also accepting gifts of tea as well. So you can send it to the show. Address is down below. Excited for speakeasy? Uh, the new Lacerda? Yes! I mean... The... We saw the prototype of it when it was here, and it was so early, like, I don't have a good feel for it, but sure, of course. Like, I'm always looking forward to Vital's next game, see what's different about it. Yeah, for sure. Have I played Craftwagon? Oh, uh, God, I played that forever ago. When it... The original... Like, way back. Who's reprinting that? I, I saw recently that somebody is, right? Uh, an Age of Engineering, or Age of Engineering. Um, that is a fancy box. Oh, Super Meeple. And Sumerat Games. Needless to say... Haven't been contacted about it, but I remember Craftwagon being fine from the previous stream or pre previous plays of it. I remember playing it two or three times and then, okay, it moved on. But maybe, maybe the new version's more interesting? I don't know. John John says yes. Weimar is incredible. The thirty first is Easter Sunday, and perfect day to stream it. I, I I think that's John's code for I'm not available. So there you, there goes that. Hi Kyle, I'm sure you left an hour ago, but hi Kyle. Oh, Jonathan says I'm picking up my copy of World Wonders tomorrow. Thanks for showing it. Um, like, had you already ordered it, or was it because of the streams? I'm just curious. Can you all hear the wind? It is, it is just wrecking stuff out there. I'm glad the car is tucked away. Like, it is bad out there. Rocky says, I can't, re uh, quoting me, I can't remember what we streamed last week. I can't remember what I did yesterday. Fair point. Uh, George says, I should also stream EOS, Isle, Island of Angels. I'll look into it. Is Prime Minister from GMT on your horizon? Yes, as is Versailles 1919. Both of those. Yep. Ah, okay. So Sandy was a comedian first, presenter second. Okay. Okay, Kyle. Take a breath. Arcs. I get it. Brotherhood and Unity. Talk about your experiences while deployed. Um, I, now I have to go look this up. I feel like we've lost... Rocky just straight to war games and that's it. Brotherhood and Unity is oh, it's the Balkans. Okay. Oh, the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Okay, fair enough. Um we we were tangentially connected to that when we were deployed to Hungary, but yeah. Uh, UK Games Expo. I have been. Jess and I went once. Uh, it's not on the, 
not on the horizon of, of doing again um, anytime soon. Just not. My, my travel is limited. Uh, I, I just don't want to go to a bunch of conventions. So UK Games Expo, the timing of it in relation to Essen, and Essen very much is the bigger priority, um, makes it unlikely. Not saying never, but unlikely. Dogging on my hat, E? <laughs> At least people are engaged enough to comment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not complaining. And I since since being friends with uh, Martin Fowler um, and his uh, my many discussions on um, I, my skin has grown thicker. New American Underground says, when you say you don't want to share the studio setup with hundreds of hours of work, do you mean it feels like intellectual property? Yup. Or ideas for setups you don't want to share? Yup. I've had enough people copy what I do here. Um, not as well as we do it here, in my opinion. But I, I, I just have no interest in dealing with more of that. So, you know what? Um... A lot of people do this for a short amount of period of time. Very few have longevity. And I, I'm, it's my livelihood. So, you know what? I understand that uh, imitation's supposedly the highest form of flattery. Figure it out yourselves for that. Thoughts on Carson City? I feel like I played it once, like the Tasty Minstrel version. Way back. I mean, way back. Uh, Iraq says, uh, I learned teaching from this channel, so that's your fault. You're welcome. I think I teach it well. Um, although, if you want to get quickly into a game, I am not your channel for that. Like... Because mostly we do front-end teaches. Tank Foxy says, I usually do all the teaching for my group. I can relate in a lesser sense when others teach and it's subpar. Yeah. It's, it's something that I have some patience with, but... Uh, it's a reason I never want to play dual gauge again. It's not because I'm not interested in dual gauge, but the last time I played it was at a convention and I wanted to claw my eyes out. It, everything about that play was miserable. No. So yeah, I think that can have a massive impact on somebody's enjoyment of a game. Case in point. Alyssa, 21 moons on 18xx.games. Just saying, I'm down. Did I look at last year's reprint of Yunon from Spielworks? If so, what did you think compared to the original? I haven't yet. Uh, I would like to. Uh, Ironically, we recently played Yunnan, unrelated to anything. We just, we had five players. And that's the best player count for sure uh, with Yunnan. And loved it. It is. I'm not great at it, but I love that game. It is mean, but really, really good. And that auction is just devious. Cricket. Now there's there's a sport I haven't gotten into, but man, that looks fun. 
Not gonna lie. Like, and, and the fact that the field all around the batter is in play, like that, that's one I've never, like isn't, isn't cricket just an excuse to go out and day drink? Isn't that what, like, to spectate cricket? Just saying. You know? But it looks like a lot of fun. But matches last days. That that seems excessive to me. So I don't know. You know. Speaking of the obscure sports. Okay, look. Cricket's obscure to people that aren't in Pakistan, India, the UK. And I guess down under. Australia, New Zealand, right? I think. Anyway. High lie. So on Fubo, that there's there's a channel that shows that shows high lie. That's one I could get down for. That's cool. I'd be down to try that. Just saying. Yeah. The eighty said it wants its sports back. I'm just saying, there is a high lie league in, down in Miami. That's pretty cool. Forrest the Glass, I read your response. I appreciate it and agree. Uh, it, it is a humanitarian issue, and I hope progress works. Let's hope. Uh, Rocky says, my family's have owned restaurants. Hard pass. Yeah, it's one of those, I like to cook. I don't think I'd like to run a restaurant because um, there, there are two great ideas for restaurants that I have. In my opinion, one is a diner. Diners are the best restaurants on the planet. I will die on that hill. If you have a great diner, oh my God, the menu usually is about that thick, right? Especially when it's run by Greeks. I don't know why, but the best diners seem to be run by Greeks. I don't understand why, but it seems to be a thing. Also, uh, if I were to ever run a high-end restaurant or own, open, whatever, um, it would be, we're serving the food tonight. You don't order. You get the food. And the drink that comes with it. So it's just the chef's tasting. The end. That's it. I like that idea of a restaurant. So those two. Polar opposites. But there's that. Yeah, Chris says, former restaurant GM, director of food and beverage, can't go back to it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, not, not, not. Yeah, no. Rocky, online poker, bad. Sports betting, that's okay. No. All right, so here's a little short little anecdote. Um, when I lived in Vegas, when I was playing poker for a living, I was tangentially connected to a sports betting syndicate. I was friends of a. Uh, I, I was friends with a guy who was friends with folks that were wagering six figures in the syndicate on stuff. Um, and they, the analytics that went involved in all they bet was over unders on NBA games, and they had some really smart computer code people writing things that were running computer programs to model and find edges in over-unders in NBA games. One of the guys I heard got hired by the Raptors back in the day. And so ever since seeing and learning of all this, I don't sports bet ever because I don't care how involved or how smart you think you are. Um, you're not. You're a square and it's lighting money on fire. If you're doing it for entertainment purposes, entertainment meaning, oh, I want to have a reason to watch this game and have a rooting interest and I want to throw 20 bucks on the game and you can afford it, sure. But anybody that says they think they, you're wrong. You're an idiot. You're a square. The end. Jess is blowing up my phone a moment. Oh, that's cool. So I, I won't mention the person's name in case they're a private person. But um, Jess is at PAX East right now. She's working uh, 
uh, for a number of publishers as well as a night move. So if you're going to PAX East, tell her hi. See her. Um, anyway, there is a patron there um, that uh, apparently uh, just watched them demo a game and uh, that they'd be good on stream. They might not want to, but hey, they're local. So hey, maybe maybe we might get somebody else into the group. That's awesome. Yay. All right. So anyway, sports betting. From an entertainment point of view, go for it. If that's your thing and you have the disposable income, um, I would I would suggest that if you have disposable income for entertainment, I would suggest supporting there first. Patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. After that, if you have more and you want to sports bet, knock yourself out. Just know that you're an idiot, you're a square, and you're probably going to lose. Long term, you're guaranteed to lose. The best in the world win at like, what, 54, 56%? It's just not, it's just not going to happen. Anyway. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, spe uh, Jason says uh, uh, Moneyball Magician, too. Speaking of magicians, I'm the world's biggest five-year-old when it comes to the magicians. I never want to know how it's done. And I've watched so many uh, sleight of hand, up-close card mechanics on YouTube. Unbelievable how good some of these people are. And I'm just like that. Like, I believe magic's real. Die on that hill. Sorry. Anyway. I have one hour until tip-off. Speaking of which, check the scores. A moment. Hey, it's March Madness. What do we got? All right. So, Oregon's uh, opponent next round, after we beat South Carolina today, is Creighton. Creighton's getting the job done, it looks like. Uh, let's... If you don't want to hear scores, sorry. Um, what do we got? Anything of note? Wow, really? Nothing? Really? Nothing? Arizona's Long Beach State. Uh, not, not a team to sleep on. Arizona's only leading by six. Oregon beat Arizona. Arizona's as a two seed is vulnerable. That's all I'm saying. And a coin flip. Michigan State beat Mississippi State. Okay. Duquesne beat BYU. And 11 upsets of six. Okay. That's pretty much where we're at. I mean, you know what? While, while, while we're here, let me just double check that Oregon is at four. Did, am I right? Yeah, it's at four on TNT. We will be watching that. All right, we have an hour to catch up. All right, let's see. There's some good chat going on over on Twitch. I appreciate that, y'all. I, I am seeing it. So, good stuff. Uh, all right, let's see. Brianna, we're getting a golden retriever puppy in the summer. Our old lazy Cooper is not going to be too impressed by the energy. That's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what? Not, not judging or anything. But I'm just curious, why a Golden Retriever? I mean, it's one of the most popular breeds out there for families. I mean, it makes sense, but just curious. Okay, so to circle back on the March versus September argument of where the injuries. Uh, Joker says, I'd rather not have hope for the postseason and have it shattered. Just give me a bad total season. I think I'm the opposite of that. I think I want to hope for a season, so I'd rather the injuries in September than March. Maybe. Maybe? Alyssa says the Phillies were five games under 500 in April and one game away from the World Series. Also a valid point. I hear you. Uh, what 18xx games are on my docket? Um, let me look at the scheduling sheet. 
that these are the ones that I put up there. Uh, Alyssa, you are welcome to add to this, but 18 Ireland, 18 17, um, those are on the kind of the short lists, and apparently 21 Moon. So there's that. All right. Uh, New American Underground asking, uh, asking about Fled. It's from the same designer as Feudum. Um, if we do stream it, it would be ahead of the release. But other than that, no. Welcome, Ryan. Again, realize this is probably an hour, hour and a half ago. But hey, so it's been forever since I saw you live. Well, I'm, I'm live a few times a week. I'm glad you can make it. I'm here. Where have you been? Just saying. <laughs> Brianna says, we had the Carson City Black Pretty Box Edition. Made Corey sell it because I didn't like it. I wasn't into trains yet. I have since apologized to him. <laughs> Fernando says, I should make a FAQ for Heavy Carbar, which consists of only one question. What does glory to Rome mean? Yeah, I do get asked that a lot. That's fair. And Ryan says, oh, I'm the reason we started playing glory, or he started playing glory to Rome. There you go. Uh, Fernando, so I asked the poll, uh, how often do you want me to do these, SE, uh, these elephants? Monthly, quarterly, meh. Or open to other ideas. I haven't seen anything on the other ideas, but it looks like uh, it looks like more than half of y'all want it quarterly. I'm sorry, monthly, and a third of y'all want it quarterly. So it sounds like monthly it's going to be. Okay, good to know. So 90% say quarterly or monthly. Okay, I will do that. Okay, apparently Quinn of Games did uh, Carson City uh, Game Found campaign. It's delivering this spring. All right, we might could get a copy. What's the game you most want to see a second edition treatment? No deluxe necessarily, but uh, just an updated gameplay design like Pax Premier and John Company. Second edition. Oh. Honestly, um, Shipyard was one, and that got done. So that that that's supposed to arrive tomorrow. Super stoked for that. What else? Uh, Metropolis or Metropolis got one. Leave it at that. Uh, huh. I mean, Three Kingdoms Redux got redone. Arkwright got redone. But basically, Capstone happened, right? All the games that we really liked, they went and reprinted. So that was good. I don't know. Um, I mean, Aegis Team got it, obviously. Yeah, I don't know. What else? That's a good question. I'll think on that. Rocky says, Homo Ludens had a stream with Mark teaching uh, Empire of the Sun. Let me guess. Uh, that was online. It says, I think it missed the mark. Um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. By the way, I recently joined the Homo Ludens uh, Discord. And uh, that's that's been entertaining. You know what? Here you go. I got my answer. I want Castles of Burgundy, but with Eno Tool doing the artwork, and I don't want the abomination that that ridiculous overproduced thing was. That. That's my answer.
I don't know what that what that is. Uh, hold on. Now, now I'm I'm. Uh, let me read what or try and Google what Jonathan wrote about what that is. Oh, the carotid uh, from the British Museum returned them to Greece. They probably give you a villa to keep. Going back to the Philip II stuff, I hear you. Yes, top 50, this side of HeavyCon. Go to road trip music. Uh, so we just did a around the country road trip last summer. And uh, spot it. so I'm a kid of the 80s and 90s, but I, I, I enjoy 50s to 90s, that window, mostly. And there's a lot. And I, I have very eclectic tastes, so... A lot of Lumineers, a lot of, uh, oh God, okay, let's see. Lumineers, Mumford & Sons, a lot of 90s country, uh, a lot of 90s and 80s songs in general. Um, Jess is a huge Dolly fan, so a lot of Dolly, a lot of Carly Simon. Some modern stuff, Avicii, I mean, there, a lot of gangster rap. So basically a very eclectic mix that I pick is, is basically what that comes down to. And if you're a patron on my Sunday updates, I set, I, I attach one of the video or one of the music uh, videos that I'm listening to while I'm writing it. So it gives you an idea of my taste of music. So very eclectic. And yeah, all over the place, but I know a lot of music from the 50s to the 90s. A lot of lyrics. The amount of storage space that that takes shocks me. A lot of digital underground, just saying. Uh, Helldivers is a co-op with extreme friendly fire, meaning you can kill your own dudes or you can't kill your own dudes. I'm not sure what that means. Fernando, if I ever decide to stream High Frontier again, I'd love a module three stream. No one has a nice one of that module and the PTZs would be fire. Maybe. I'll leave it at that. Maybe. Uh, Seattle Sasquatch. I mean, it feels redundant, but okay. Uh, I've been enjoying the co-pilot solo streams. Some people do, some people don't. So we're going to keep it mixed up, right? There are going to be some streams that are co-op, some that aren't for solos I'm talking about. I've enjoyed them. Oh, hey, look it up. Bob, another opportunity to mention Anno 1800. Oh, for uh, board game implementation. That wasn't bad. It was fine. Uh, apparently, Stardew Valley. I'm familiar with the video game, never played it, and apparently the board game's decent. Okay, good to know. Skyrim, apparently, board game, not terrible. XCOM wasn't bad. These are what people are saying. Okay. Apparently Frostpunk's supposed to be good, but isn't that going the other way? Earthborn Rangers. Daniel, cheers from Switzerland. Hi. Earthborn Rangers. Let me go look.
It's Frosted Games, so it's entirely possible. It's Matthias's game. Um, so maybe at some point, maybe. Imperial Struggle, all in due time. Happy to answer your question, Chris, with, uh, with that there, okay? Only one, uh, only ones missing, apparently, are Vanuatu and Distilled. Yeah, um, yeah, Dungeon Pets is pretty, pretty solid. I'm excited that somebody asked for that one, uh, for winning one of the contests. That, that's a good call. Um, Jose, very good point. Alexander the Great was nothing without Olympia. Uh, again, Olympia. Arguably the baddest woman in the history of history. The fact that she gets no run. How is there not a board game with that theme on there? Or a movie with that theme? Like, oh my god, Olympia was a bad ass. Yes, agreed. Good call, Jose. Okay, other people have asked about Earthborn Rangers. Again, this is where you guys can also help reaching out to publishers and letting them know you want to see it here. Am I excited to try out the upcoming solo for Oath? I mean, it's Ricky Royal, so yes, but Oath solo, eh, if that makes sense. So we'll see. I'll do it. I still, Ricky and I were going to tag team John Company. I need to get on that, so make that happen. So, yeah. <laughs> Jose says, uh, Olympia wore the big men boots in that house, not Philip II. No arguments there. You, you, you make a fair point. Uh, okay, so Tyler says uh, Union Stockyard, super light, but such a fun game, and and the theme apparently drips, and the economic engine in it, like the model works, from what I've heard. It's family level, yeah, that's that's what, it, but I I'm still interested. Again, medium and heavy. Medium and heavy. Hand of Lennon says, uh, Distilled was cool at first, but it, it not so sure about its longevity. Uh, didn't enjoy it after three plays. So, okay, fair enough. Power Grid Streams. Um, they, there's only so many hours in a day, and it can't all be Age of Industry, Age of Steam, and Power Grid. But... Plus, we went through almost all the maps that I have. I don't know. Y'all tell me, what maps did we not do? Age of Steam Con, November 8th to 10th. Maybe. That might could be doable, Chris. Maybe. Um, yeah, uh, we'll see. The Lighter says, hey, Edward, thanks a lot for your work. Your streams are the best out there. Shucks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, The Lighter. Just wanted to recommend a very strange, super strategic game for a two-player thematic game. Uh, so, Fog of Love. I don't know if it was you that mentioned this, um, but I'm totally down to try it. I don't have a copy, but... But if somebody wants to get me a copy, have it show, I will, I will, I'm down for it. I've heard it uh, a couple of times now. So I'm just saying, just saying. Have we played 1930, the golden age of flight? Have not. Let me look that one up. I need to not use... The keypad. You sure? Oh, it's the golden age of airlines, not a flight. 
Uh, oh, no, that one, it, it's, uh, it's coming. So, no, not yet. I have not. Let me... Yeah, no, um, it might be, it might be in the box that arrives tomorrow. Potentially? So we'll see. As far as the uh, Bezier trick takers, some you may know about, some you might not. So I'll, I'm willing to give it a give it consideration. The lighter, all right. No, uh, Chip. Uh, the new Food Network show, Wildcard Kitchen, combines cooking and poker. The tiniest bit. Have you seen it? Briefly and no, just no. <laughs> T. Lee asks, uh, Do you prefer Do you prefer Age of Steam? Over 18xx genre? Probably, I think the answer is yes on that. Do you stream a you stream Age of Steam more? Is it a better game or just because it's quicker? Thanks for your time. Apples and giraffes? I mean, they're nothing alike. Um, but it's definitely more accessible and it's easier to get to the table, Age of Steam is, than, than 18xx games. And I enjoy them more. I, I, I want... I want Age of Steam, or I'm sorry, I want 18xx occasionally. I mean, to be honest, like, I don't want Age of Steam all the time either. But I can handle Age of Steam more than I can 18xx. So that's why. John says, Derek Carr was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm interested in playing it more. And the history of Derek Carr is fascinating. It basically was like a 10-day period or two-week period. In Argentina that had five presidents. So, yeah. <laughs> Alyssa says, I've been waiting for my copy of the new Robinson Crusoe for years. Good luck for, with that. Okay, noted. Peter, welcome. Oh, Alyssa. Age of Steam Acrylic Tiles and Expansion 4 just arrived. In Boston. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not here. Sorry. That sucks. All right. I'm going to have to try Craft Wagon again because I, I thought it was meh, but I'll have to try it again. All right. Oh, that explains it. Clearly, I'm going to have to try it again. So we'll see. I, I would. Did anything change in the new edition, Bree? Have a good one, Eric. Good Friday is a state holiday up in the Great White North, eh? Nice. Three-day weekend for Alyssa. Um, Marcus. Ah, wrong one. Let's try that again. Boo. All right. You see that in the bottom right? Let's see if I can get in shot. Oh, where is it? No, I can't get in shot. Anyway, that one on the bottom right, that's going to be the next one. We did Qu Colonial Twilight. So, there you go. Still not used to a PTZ being the main camera. So, getting my keyboard dumped in. Anyway. Uh, I mean, I don't... I John, Easter, I... If Sunday's open, y'all... That's up to Paul and up to Ken and up to John. I'm just saying, Weimar. Oh, okay. John, Jonathan says, yeah, I definitely ordered uh, World Wonders because of the streams. I wouldn't have even heard of it if not for showing it. All right. Cool. Good. How do I see my evolution as a gamer? Are there games you liked before but don't anymore and vice versa? So a lot of people, so one of the downsides to heavy cardboard 
is a lot of y'all, when you come in here, you, a, a lot of y'all, not all, mind you, but a number, um, you come into the hobby, like people come in from, I don't know, Carcassonne, Ticket to Ride, whatever your entry point is. You want to see what else is out there, and that's where, theoretically, that's where you find heavy cardboard. And then we open your eyes to a plethora of other things, like be it whether it's 18xx, whether it's war games, whether it's really esoteric stuff like Amabel Holland's games, um, or like John Company and Cole Worley's and all that. I am still an Omni gamer in a sense that I do prefer my bigger, heavier games, but I still like games like Cascadia, um, I, the occasional party game. I love trick taking games, all that, right? Some of y'all tend to, once you find a niche, go deep into that niche. And then all you want see streamed is that niche. It's not going to happen because for me, I still enjoy these other things. And as long as that's the case, that's what heavy cardboard is going to be. So for me, I don't know that I, I mean, the second game I ever played in the hobby, second or third was Dominant Species. And I've been in on this ever since. So I guess the idea of the Monster War games was appealing to me back in the day, less so now. Monster meaning the ones that, like, my table doesn't fit. But for me, I don't think I've... I don't want rules or mechanisms in there just because. So I think I have sharpened my focus a little bit on that. There is a certain game that is on crowdfunding... That is the second game from a designer whose game I won't mention. Um, that kind of falls in line with that. Like what I've fallen out of interest in. But for the most part, I still love war games. I still love 18... or I really like 18xx games. I still love heavy euros. That's still my wheelhouse. But I like all these other things as well. So it's refined a little, but I haven't gone down these rabbit holes or these tunnels that some of the well to be honest if you're watching this you still enjoy the content we make so i'm not talking to you there are a lot of people who went down some very sharp deep holes whether it's 18xx whether it's esoteric um that don't watch the show anymore and because they went down these you know, we introduced them into this stuff and then they went and they're gone. And I don't, I mean, I, I just don't want the show to be omnidirectional in that regard. I want the flexibility. I want to play the games I want to play. And that's why medium and heavy were games in 18xx. So there you go. So anyway, uh, Hopefully that answers your question, Wolfbane's Gaming Den. Chip says, Coast Watchers looks great. Cross Bronx Expressway is a fascinating, harrowing, difficult game. Have a great time at Circle DC. Yeah, I'm looking forward to both of them, let me tell you. Peter, quick question, quick answer. I'd like to dive into space games from a certain Mr. Eklund. I'm afraid, though, that High Frontier or Interstellar will kill me uh, and my friends, in terms of complexity, which to start with? They are very different. Interstellar is more akin to a co-op, which could turn competitive, uh, station fall. It's all, it, 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 it's less about the high frontier, like, it's more about the story than it is, and it's more, and high frontier can be a competitive, but also it's about the experience. So they're very different. I mean, Jeff did a really good teach on the channel for high frontier. So 
may, maybe start with non, like, is it specifically the space games you're interested in or Eklund's games? Because I'll be honest, uh, Bios Genesis is freaking fantastic. I love that game. I really do. Um, not space, but yeah. And that's way easier to get into. Same with the, a lot of the PAX games. So, honestly, watch the video, read the rule book, dive in, have fun. And if it's not your cup of tea, then guess what? Don't do it. I'm fine with that, right? Like, that's okay. I, I shouldn't say I'm fine with it, obviously. Whatever. Uh, not every game is for every player. Maybe it works in theory, but it doesn't work in, a, in, in actual experience. That's okay. Find something that does. So there you go. Hope I hope that answers your question, Peter. All right. So yeah, we never stream Carson City, but if I were to get a copy, we could stream it. I'm fine with that. Wolfbane's Gaming Den again asks, what games or types of games do you normally play when playing with either non-gamers? I don't play with non-gamers. Uh, or those that are casual gamers. Recommendations for such games. I don't. And that's not an elitist thing. It's just, I play for the show. So I don't. Um, however, I guarantee the community has good answers for you for that. And my, my best answer for you, non-gamers and casual gamers. I hate the idea of a entry level game or a family level game or a, a gateway there you go a gateway game a gateway game f that just get rid of that term because i think and i feel real strongly about this people that want to engage their brains and engage in a game aren't looking for a gateway game. If those aren't the people, then what I'm about to say doesn't apply. Then, hey, you know, look, Carcassonne, Ticket to Ride, uh, Catan, all these gateway games are amazing for those people, right? Or party games, the like, Wavelength, still one of my all time favorite party games, right? Or, or, um, Oh God, uh, the stance. I can't think of, uh, there are a number of party games that are great for casual gamers, right? Or, or, or non-gamers that don't want to engage that way. If there are people that want to engage and be taxed brain wise and are interested in that, I think bringing them into the hobby via a gateway game has as good of a chance of turning them off of gaming than it does somebody that doesn't want to engage and bringing them into something like Vimar. The reason I feel so strongly about this is I have used Lahav as an entry level game, a gateway game. I have used Dominant Species is a gateway game. Find a theme that engages with them, but also make sure that they want to engage with the game and 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 work a little bit and use their brains in that regard. And if they do, find the theme that fits and pick that game. Now, obviously, uh, Peter was just asking about a space game. I'm never bringing a new player in with High Frontier. That that's probably a bridge too far, unless. Unless maybe they're an astrophysicist, maybe that will engage with them. So the level of engagement that they want with the game, as well as their intelligence level, and this isn't to disparage, but somebody that isn't, yeah, like High Frontier ain't for everybody. It, it, it wears me the hell out. So match that with the player and that's the biggest thing again i don't play with non-gamers or casual because 
Even if I were to play, I'm going to conventions. Casual gamers and non-gamers aren't really going to the types of conventions that I go to, so I'm just not engaging with those people. But I know that there are, uh, like, uh, Martin the Younger games at library every month, and I know there are, I know Fowler goes, sometimes goes to a another game group. Like, they're, match the audience to the game. Match the game to the audience. That's the biggest thing. I feel real strongly about that. Real strongly. Space Corp. That is a wonderful recommendation, Marcus. That is a wonderful. Well done, you. So, Peter, Space Corp would be an awesome... If if High Frontier feels like maybe a bridge too far, maybe, maybe go Space Corp from GMT. That is a great, wonderful suggestion. Yes. Or Eclipse. Second Dawn, yes, another good one. There you go, well done. Rocky, or Leaving Earth. Yeah, I bounced hard off that game, but it's out there and some people enjoy it. So there you go, hopefully that answers your question. Sorry, a little get off my soapbox. I just, I've, I've said this repeatedly over the years, but I feel real strongly about that. Um. Oh, here you go, and uh, I'm actually reading current chat. Joe says, the best two heavy gamers, uh, heavy games, sorry, I have successfully taught to very casual gamers are hegemony and obsession. Both, you're do uh, what you're doing makes so much sense in the real world in terms of, you know, the rules fit the theme and everything. Totally, I agree. Obsession is a wonderful suggestion on that. And hegemony, if they're into real world economics and like class warfare, I mean, yeah, that's great. Awesome recommendations, y'all. Circadian's Chaos Order. I have not, Guillaume. Oh, Joker says cricket's newer format is really more of a like a day a game of baseball. Still long, but a wrap. Oh, oh, all right. So if there are any viewers out there that are big into cricket and want to get together and watch a match together one day, I'm in. Let me know, and we'll zoom or something, and and you can walk me through the rules while we're watching it. I'm totally down for that. Let's do it. Brian says I know you love Mr. President. Swoon. I do. Have you tried Prime Minister? Not yet. No. Not yet. Soon. Don't worry. All right. Oh, Will Spain says there are three formats for crickets. You have the five-day matches, which are called test matches. I don't understand why they're called test matches. I know that, but I... Mm, all right. You also have one-day matches, which play in a day. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's only two. That's only two you mentioned, Wolf Spain. Um, come on. What, now, now I'm hanging on what the third one is. Okay, yeah. And, and Rocky and Alyssa say the T20 or the 20 over version is about the length of a baseball game. See that? I'm in for that. Ooh, that's a good question, William. My energy is not waning. It's it's growing. Oh, I love this. I can have my legs up, my feet up on the table. Oh, you can barely see my slipper there. But yeah, I like that it's off camera. All right. All right. Uh, William, great question. Would you prefer being taught by an, a new game by a good teacher or reading, learning the rules yourself? Oh, that's such a good question. I I thoroughly enjoy learning new games, but oh my God, there is such sweet, blissful pleasure being taught a new game and not having to learn it. So it depends on the mood and it depends, depends on the game and depends on the mood, like where my head is, right? Like if I'm exhausted, not exhausted. But if I've been learning a bunch of new games recently and I'm just like, at game day, there's a lot of, like, there, there are times, so Dan, 
You'll never see him on stream. He'll only be on Steph's, uh, Board Game Steph's channel. He doesn't like me that much. So be it, Dan. Dan is our local curmudgeon. But it's glorious in that if it's a game I don't want to learn, and we're gonna we're gonna bust it out on game day, I just toss him the rule book and say, All right, Dan, it's on you. Do it. And I can just sit and chill, and he's usually really good about it. So man, that's a great question. I love learning new games though. And I'm really good at it, I think. Yeah, that's good. It depends. But mostly I would say I like learning. If it's a game I'm interested in, for sure me. If it's a game I'm like, huh, about, then I am I probably would prefer somebody else. As long as they're good. That's the key. The uh, What I've learned uh, also is I am a terrible person to teach games to. And I apologize, Paul, Uvula Bob, I apologize to you. He tried, and, and same to John, both of them. They recently taught uh, Wonderland's War and Kutnohara to me and the rest of the group when we were at a game day. And I wouldn't shut up, and I kept making jokes, and that pisses me off so bad when other people do it, and I did it, so I'm sorry, guys. Um, my job is to shut the up and uh and and learn the game and if i have questions save them till the end i know that because that's how i want it and i didn't do that and i i i'm still still uh dealing with that deep-seated regret and and i feel in guilt for doing that legitimately i feel bad because i think i'm funny and i that's the wrong time to make jokes just let them teach they're making the effort to do it and they're both good at it and so i'm sorry guys so, yeah, don't do that. If somebody's teaching you the game, shut the f up and let them teach you the game. If you have questions, wait till the end. If you can't remember, wait until that part of the teach is done and then ask if you can ask a question about that because there's a flow to teaching games. Don't mess it up. And I do that, and I'm sorry. Got that off my chest. I hope that feels heartfelt because it is. So yeah, shut up when people are teaching you games. Don't make jokes. Don't talk about sports. Don't talk about anything. Shut up and listen to the rules. They're taking the time to learn it and teach you. They probably take some joy in that. Don't, don't, don't take their joy. And it's rude. So that. So don't be rude, people. Edward. Mad at myself for that. Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> Rocky says, the best diners are run by Albanians. I'm also biased. Rocky, you're Albanian? Did I not know that? And sell me on why Albanians diners are better than Greek diners. I, I don't know that I have experience with Albanian diners, so maybe I'm speaking out of line due to lack of experience. I'm all ears. Yeah, or, or, or if somebody's teaching a game and they ask any questions or does that make sense, that's a good time to ask the question. By the way, that's why I do that on stream. Even if the uh, folks here know the game, they still might, that gives me an opportunity, them an opportunity, hey, you missed this type. Oh yeah, hey, what about this? That's a nice way of saying Psst, you've missed this um, or forgot this or clarification or maybe it wasn't super clear or maybe they don't remember and they want clarification on it and they want yeah that's a, that's a good way to do it hurling is a great obscure sport Scott says pro team came to Fenway for a demo match awesome hurling not curling with a C which is shuffleboard on ice also a great obscure sport uh what the hell is hurling, Scott? I don't know what this is. Hurling. I'm picturing dudes throwing heavy things over a height. Hurling it over. One of two national sporting games of Ireland is seen, uh, is seen as one of the fastest field sports on earth. 
and only played with a face mask and helmet. What the hell is this? What? Hold on. That is a big field. Okay, what? what is it? It's played by men. One of Ireland's native Gaelic games. It shares a feature with Gaelic football. Field and goal. By the way, rugby. I don't like rugby as much as I like Australian rules football. Sue me. I'm sorry, Kyle. Don't judge. But Kyle and I are going to a game this spring. So he's going to sell me on why it is. So there's a stick called a hurley. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know nothing about this hurling. Now, now I'm fascinated to learn more. All right. Uh, all right, Brian, I know you're a poker player. I, are you a poker player pre or post moneymaker? Pre, I cut my teeth playing four, eight limit and eight, 16 limit back in the day. Um, yeah, no, I, I was born in 75. So moneymaker was 2003 or 2004. One of them, 2003, I think. Uh, so I was, I was 28. I think I was still, I wasn't quite, no, I wasn't 20. Yeah, I was 28. I wasn't playing professionally yet, but I was playing online already. Not well, mind you, back then, but I was I was I was better than most. I was making money, but um yeah, definitely pre money maker. Speaking of which, I don't think he would mind me saying this. So, I don't get like kind of like awestruck or or like uh, what do you call it? Like ooh, celebrity, right? Whatever. Um, I really don't. However, I thought it was cool to meet Paul, like UV LaBob, because he was making he was making videos that I used to watch when I first got into the hobby. So that was cool. And now he's part of our game group. So that's awesome. But speaking of poker, um, I played with a lot of quote unquote names. Uh probably the most interesting. Let's Let's stick to the poker aspect of this and not go into personal histories of things. But uh, when I lived in Amarillo, there were a lot of underground games because there's no poker rooms near there. Um, and I did play a number of times with the aforementioned uh, uh, Amarillo Slim. Um, I beat up on him pretty bad uh, every time I played him. So that was kind of cool. Um, play with a, a, a number of names that you guys would know. Uh, the coolest it live session I ever had. I, I've told this story before, but if you're not interested in poker, I apologize. I'm going to run late and I'll have the game running in the background, but so be it. But uh, the single coolest like session of poker I ever had. I was playing 510. This is back when I was playing for a living uh, in Vegas. I was playing 510 at the win. This is before it moved to the Encore, before the Encore existed. So 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. Um, playing the 510, which was the biggest game at the win at the time. Uh, everything was uncapped at the win at that time. Even the 1-3 one, one, game was uncapped, which is comical. You see guys buying in for like 10,000 at a 1-3 game. It's Anyway. Um, so I'm playing the 510 and Vanessa Selps came and sat down to my right. And back then, this is before she she really got famous, but she was famous as a online crusher. And she also was a teacher for, I think Deuces Cracked, I think was the website uh, that she was a teacher for back then. And I knew her and I was like, whoa, like I was like, hey, hey, Vanessa. Like, I know her. Like, we used to kick it old school or something. But um, I was like, hey, Vanessa, I'm Edward, whatever, da-da-da-da. So we're playing. Glad she was on my right. Uh, fast forward an hour, maybe two hours. We're sitting there, whatever, grinding away. And then uh, into the room walked Andrew Roble, who his online name at the time was good to see you. Uh, oh, God. Uh Phil, um, not, oh God. Oh my God, Clay Aiken. That's his online name. If Phil, ugh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, one of the single greatest, Phil Galfon, that's it. Phil Galfon walked in with Andrew Roble 
as well as a couple other people from 2 plus 2, which is the poker form, by the way, uh, at least was back in the way, back in the day. Sup, bro? Uh, it walked in, and we were the, back then, the, in the win poker room, there was a, like a, the poker room was open, then there was this, like, dais that had, a ha like, five tables. We were the only table, that was the high limit area, which 510 is not high limit, but I digress. Uh, there were, we were the only game that was going on up there. Phil Galfon and Andrew Robel walked up, as well as Gank. Gank was there too. Um, Gank was part of the uh, Scotty Fishman's crew back in the day. Uh, he'd won a high-low Omaha bracelet, whatever. So they all walked up. And... Galfon was like, hey, does anybody just want to play, mess around and play like some 5-5 PLO, which is Pot Limit Omaha. 5-5 is a big game, but you got to understand that is a tiny game compared to what he normally plays, what these guys would play back then. And I don't play PLO. I know how to play it. I just don't play it well. It's not a game I ever was interested in. Anyway, and Vanessa's like, yeah, I'm down. And I'm thinking to myself, when am I ever going to be able to sit in this lineup? Ever. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. I'll lose 500, 1,000. Fine, so be it. And my roommate at the time, Asani Fisher, who became one of the best daily sports uh, gambler or, you know, tournament players in the world down the road, um, he was a PLO specialist, really. He played home, or he played Holden, but he really got, he was really good at Omaha. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. So here I am, and I have pictures of, to this day, sitting in a game with Gank, Andrew Robel, Phil Galfon, uh, Vanessa Selps, and Asani Fisher, and we're all doing shots at the table. I don't ever drink when I'm at the poker table because I'm working. And that was just, I lost my buy-in, and that was fine. I didn't care, but that was, that was one of the more surreal nights. Anyway, all of this story, back then, around the moneymaker time. There was another kid, he's, you know, younger than me, but he was a kid back then, Gavin Griffin, that was kind of a, a big deal and uh, apparently plays Big O a lot now and whatever. Anyway, he's coming to HeavyCon. I know Gavin Griffin through Twitter and I know him from watching him on ESPN and stuff from back in the day and then he and I kind of interacted a bunch on Twitter, found out he's into board games, also big TCU fan. And I, I've always said, hey, if you ever want to come to HeavyCon, and he's like, yeah, so he's coming this year. I am very excited about that. Very excited about that. So anyway, that was a very long story that n like four of you guys care about, but that was, that was a cool moment. I played Chinese poker with Jean-Robert Belland on Asani's birthday night. Um, uh, this was a funny story. So this is the poker world in a lot of ways. So Asani and I, we were roommates, never met Jean Robert Belan before. And Jean Robert walks in to the poker room and is like, Hey, does anybody have a couple thousand dollars I can borrow? Um, I'm good for it, whatever. And Asani's like, yeah. So he goes to his box, pulls out a few grand, whatever, gives them to him. He's like, do you want to play any Chinese? Chinese poker is a gambler's gambling game. And I dabbled back in the day with it. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, and so the three of us sat down at, and we were basically, we had a dealer. So the, the win poker room back in the day um, would spread whatever you wanted to spread if they had a table. And so the three of us sat down and I was playing both of them for $10 a point. And they were playing each other like thirty or forty dollars a point. That's a lot. That's really big. That's a really big game. Anyway, um, so that was fun. And then later that night, uh, Jean Robert was like, "Hey, what are you guys doing for your birthday?" And he's like, "Oh, I just we're gonna go to Trist, which is the club that was at the win." And he's like, "Ah, come on." So Jean Robert, being a celebrity. We just went right by the line and just walked in. So that was kind of cool. That was so back in the day, like being a poker player, it had its 
surreal qualities playing for a living, uh, living in Vegas. Um, friends are getting in trouble, bail them out of jail. Uh, just the surreal lifestyle. There are aspects of it I miss. There are aspects I don't. The stress was unbelievable. It's worse than it is doing board games for a living, let me tell you. Um, but also stressful here, but believe it or not. Um, but yeah, so I miss aspects of it and I don't miss some aspects of it. So anyway, Alyssa says, I lost five figures in high school on sports betting. See, there you go. Yeah, no, sports betting, bad. You're, you're, you're terrible at it. If you're watching this, you're terrible at it. Myself included. I know this. Anyway. Have not seen the menu, I don't think, Brianna. Is it any good? The Hand of Lemon says, Cucumber sandwiches, beer, and an afternoon nap. That's cricket. I'm down. Not the beer, but something else. Fine. Yeah, never, ever, ever bet on your team that you're emotionally invested in sports. Nothing good comes of it. I can make a case for betting against your team in sports. Misery hedge. If your team wins, awesome. If your team loses, hey, I made some money. Win-win. Misery hedge. Yeah, it is funny. The sports betting legal, but online poker mostly illegal. Hmm. Anyway. Do I have any interviews planned for no, because I'm not sure, but uh, who all is going to be there? Plus, I want to meet them and I'll set them up when it's not in a convention setting because I don't want to take up their time at the convention. Plus, be much more relaxed to do it this way, if that makes sense. Uh, Renee, don't know about Spiel this year. Came for an Ask the Elephant in a March Madness spoiler show breaks out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm excited about the Big Ten. Uh, I'm excited for the Ducks to rule it. Ooh. It's almost game time. I'm just saying. All right, so getting back, Brianna, about the Golden Retriever. I always wanted a happy-go-lucky doggy, and they are the quintessential breed, sure. Corey also grew up with a golden English Mastiffs. He's only willing to go as big as the golden retriever. <laughs> See, I love... So, Lincoln isn't really a lap dog, but he shows affection and he's bony. But I, I, I am very partial to greyhounds. I love my greyhound. He is a good boy. And Asher was an amazing greyhound as well. Uh, let's see. Madeira second edition. Oh, sidestepping that. Adam says, I'm jealous you ha all have competitive teams. He's a Pirates fan. God bless you, Adam. I feel for you. That's rough. That sucks. Now, to be clear, Oregon Ducks, thank you, Phil Knight. Okay? But I was, I was back in the day, Oregon Duck fan. I am a Canucks fan. How many how, how many cups do we have? In 2011, still hurts. I'm a Reds fan. Last one at 90. Just saying. I remember where I was before that sweep. And I'm a Cowboys fan. And I hate being a Cowboys fan. Oh, I hate my team. I hate it. Mm. So competitive some years. But oh my God. I, li I, I am the epitome of heartbreak. That's, at least as a Pirates fan, you know you have no hope. And I don't mean that as a jab, just your owner's terrible. Ours isn't much better. Could be worse, could be an A's fan. I'm just saying. Automobile, new edition. Good call, Guillermo. Guillermo? 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 I struggle with that one. I'm trying. Sorry. Greed Inc. reprint. I'm really curious to see how that theme is accepted in 2024. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Is there value to buy the newest Wallace game? 
Age of Steam, uh, Railways of the World, or Steam. Like, hold on, the newest Wallace meaning Steam Power? There, There's merit there. I don't know the cost, and again, worth is hard to say, but if you have a group that will play it, I think I think it's a legitimately solid entry. It is better than I thought it was going to be at first. This War of Mine, good, uh, great uh, uh, board game implementation of a video game. Um, it was sitting on the shelf. It's downstairs now, but yeah, good call. Jasper asks, am I the only person not interested in Earthborn Rangers? Fair. Yeah, it seems. Have not replayed Bloodstone since the stream during the Kickstarter. It's not an indictment to the game. It's just we have the prototype and it just it's on to the next game. Unless it really hits with us, it doesn't stick around in the rotation. So it's less an indictment on the game and more just the realism of the show all right it's four o'clock pause time priorities i love y'all but i didn't expect this to still be going at four o'clock but if you're me i should have because nope wrong 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 channel all right let me find this Got to find the TNT channel on here. Um, that's CBS. I need to mute that so I don't get hammered. Hold on. Wagner hanging in there against North Carolina, huh? Okay. Uh, seriously. Okay. Let me try this another way. Look, if it's going to run this long, you're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. There we go. I'll try and do it this way. There it is. It's muted. Okay. I need to sign in now. Hold on. Man, that wind is still kicking out there. Wow. All right, we are now watching a commercial for that. Okay, good. There we go. There we go. Let me bring you all back up. There we go, and there. Cool, now I can see everything that I need. All right, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so Chris, getting back to the power grid discussion, power grid alternative uh, power plant sounds interesting. I agree. We, we'll get back to it. We will. Uh, let's see. Who is this? This is Forest of Glass. I'm wondering, with the HCHQ team, uh, would they like Pursuit of Happiness as a light adventure? Maybe. I mean, it's not. A, no one has said, hey, we need to play this. So think of it that way. Steph says 1930 is very nice. The the history of aviation or whatnot. Uh, I liked it a lot. Kind of 18xx light ish. All right. Spirit Island. I do not have a copy. You're right, Chris. If I ever get a copy, I will stream it solo. Bushman says, your progress string compelled me to get it and love it. I uh, just wanted to say thank you. I really enjoy that game. Martin Fowler, on the other hand, polar opposite. John says he's down to play Fog of Love with me and role play. I'm in. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
Oh, Alyssa says Spirit Island still in Boston. I have access to it for three more months. All right. Well, I need to return uh, uh, Star Wars Rebellion so I can swap that out, Alyssa. Honestly, so Seattle Sasquatch says I chose the other on the poll for how often to do this. Say every other month because I have uh, time constraints and allows me to have more free time. Honestly, this is fun for me. I'm enjoying this. Uh, I didn't expect it to go past four o'clock. Maybe I should have because it's me. But that said, I have the game on. I mean, it's pregame right now, but uh, they're showing uh, Michi Johnson and how the Ducks need to shut him down. I hope so. So fair, but this is cool. I don't mind doing this. Uh, Marcus says, John Company in space is what I've heard about Interstellar. I mean... I guess I could see that, maybe. At least... A mix of John Company and Space and Station Fall, because again, it's about the story more than the game, but yeah. Chip says, I'd absolutely listen to your color con and commentary and sports analysis, but don't quit HC. I I'm not planning on it. Don't worry. Another BIOS Genesis stream? Um, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, and Graham, uh, going back to the whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, gateway game, Twilight Struggle would work for some. Because let's face it, Twilight Struggle is not a hard game, like complex as far as rules complexity. It's a deep game and knowing the cards, knowing the deck and, and the interactions, and then it just goes layer upon layer. Kind of like in Lahav, yes, I'm comparing Twilight Struggle and Lahav, that... Look, surface level Lahav, not mechanically hard to play, but to be able to plan for those late game ships and, and shipping, that's where the depth comes in. But you can graduate to that. Same with like Twilight Struggle. I agree with that. Adam says the game uh, that introduced me to hobby gaming is Agricola. Also true. Look, Misery Farm is amazing. Oh, what kind of tripod do I use for a top view? I don't use a tripod. Pear. Pear ask. Uh, I did when I first started. Go back to the 2014 streams. I used a tripod back then. Th thanks for the forgiveness, John. I appreciate that. Aussie rules is over rugby, according to Chris. Those are fighting words from Kyle, probably, but I'm just saying. Graham says, if you like the NFL, I probably recommend rugby league over rugby. What's the difference? I have no clue. Okay. And yes, no limit, E. I never played with uh, Phil Lack or Phil Ivy. Oh, oh, you were trying to get the name. Galfon, right, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, yes, Gavin is coming to Heavy Cardboard. Like, I'm not using that as a selling point, but I think it's cool. Like, Yarun's coming from Splatter. Uh, he's come all but one year, right? Um, and I'm hoping, he, I'm hoping Cole and... Maybe Volko and all them, and a number of them can come as well. So we'll see. Seattle Sasquatch says, Poker Stories. Uh, my cousin has a ton of these. Sound just like Edwards. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I've played with some celebrities. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's it. It's the poker table is one of those few places that you can actually meet Uh celebrities that you would never be able to meet outside of, right? Like, I'm never going to step on a baseball field against 
you know, professional players. But I could sit at a poker table against them, right? I know Richard Seymour, uh, Hall of Famer, uh, football player, former uh, Patriot. He he plays poker a lot. Um, yeah, there's there's a number of folks that do. <laughs> Chinese poker is the sick person's version of Pai Gao, right? Yeah, it's it's. Whew. Here I stand. Eventually, I think we could probably do it, but we just, we haven't played, I haven't played Here I Stand in seven, eight years, and eventually, Fernando, but not anytime soon. All right, South Carolina won the opening tip. Good defense, though, Ducks. Never tell a poker player your couch is always open to them. Yeah, that's a fair point. I never, I never had that problem, though. Although I, I do say for board gamers that... Oh, nice! <laughs> nice! Good D. Sorry. Uh, that uh, we have a spare, spare bed here at the studio that I sometimes offer to folks. Just saying. Yeah, Robert says, I played uh, poker with Jerry Buss in 2006. Bumped me out of a tournament after I forced them into a rebuy. There you go. See? Not often. You're going to be able to play with, you know, multi-millionaires, if not billionaires. So, awesome. Good stuff. Oh, defense looking good early. They stayed for three weeks. That's rough. Oof. Yes, I hate being a Cowboys fan. I do. I really, really do, Chris. Try being a Vikings fan. Yeah, at least we were good. That's true. That's fair. Hey, Lincoln, come here. How was your nap? Come here. Come here. Hi. How was your nap, sleepyhead? Hi. Obligatory Greyhound time. Oh, your breath is terrible right now. Can you go brush your teeth, please? Oh, I feel good. Yay. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I have never played Baseball Highlights 2045. If I'm going to play a baseball game, I want to play Stratomatic. Chris, sports teams haven't played in a title game since 91 when I was less than 10. I feel you there. That's, that, that's rough. You know what? I didn't realize that. Nice take. Where, how's there no foul? Anyway. Uh, Gary says the Reds have won three World Series championships since their last loss in a World Series game. 75, 76, and 90. But that also means we haven't reached the World Series since 90. So there's that. And, and, <laughs> offensive. Nice, boys. Tycoon India 1981. Auction and worker placement. Tycoon India 1981. I'll look it up. Nineteen eighty one. Okay. Uh Chip, another vote for eighteen Ireland. Good. Is Heavy Cardboard one of the channels they're getting early copies of ARCs? Probably not. I haven't heard anything about it. I'll find out from Cole soon. So maybe not. Uh, second version of Glory to Rome. I mean, the, people say that Motnai, Motnai, however you say it, is supposed to be like a, a, a reimagining of that. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I suppose for folks that want it, yeah, that's fair. It's a great game. Hey, Laszlo, welcome. Is there a chance you guys are going to play Weimar again? Yes. Uh, when? Soon-ish. It's uh, all, all down to, uh, t 
to availability of pe people. So don't know. Uh, Imperial struggle happens after Twilight struggle. Ah, boo. Just gave up three. Um, all right. I have caught up. That's it. That's not bad. What? We started at one o'clock, a little over three hours for a nasty elephant. That's pretty good. And one, baby. All right. So that's a wrap. That's it for today. If you are a patron, you're going to be able to see Salton Sea on Friday. Um, Salton Sea. Is that. So if you're a patron, patreon.com forward slash HHQ at the $5 and up level, you'll get to see that Friday. Maybe you'll get to see Derek Carr on Saturday. Schedule dependent on winter percussion. And then Sunday, we're streaming this for the rest of the world. So if you want to see the behind the scenes stuff, become a patron, support the show. Uh, otherwise, like, subscribe. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully I've entertained you for a few hours. If you find the entertainment valuable, support the show. If you find value in what we provide you, whether it's entertainment, good recommendations, or or on the flip side of that, recommendations on what games to stay away from, there's value in that. Consider supporting the show. So, yeah, all, all those things. Uh, good reasons. Plus, you get access to the Slack channel, a lot of Patreon-only streams. Basically, they are our pre-plays of these. They're a lot more relaxed and a lot less formal, and you get to see us cut up more than we do on stream. Uh, so if that's your thing, uh, consider supporting the show. Really appreciate all y'all hanging out today. That's a wrap. Go Ducks! Let me borrow that, Davis. Go Ducks! And uh, I'll see you, if you're a patron, tomorrow. Or I'll see you Sunday, if you're not. So appreciate the support. Appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Stay Safe out there if you're in the Boston area because the wind is ridiculous here. Alyssa, stay warm. Take care, everybody. Bye.